Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Merit at First Sight All Star Panel. Uh, I'm Glenn. This is Jackie, and we got some great people with us to discuss the Merit at First Sight Panel. A Merit at First Sight this week. Uh, let's start with um, uh, my right, Tommy and Artie. What's going on, y'all? <laughs> you not gonna say? <laughs> you got it. You got it. I'm Artika. This is Tommy, who apparently doesn't speak today. <laughs> <laughs> and we're August Love Story. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have Talisa Ray. How you doing, Talisa? I'm doing well. How is everybody today? Uh, just the one and only me, Talisa Ray. Y'all know I do have my review. It's coming. It's going. Right now, it's going to be up after we finish. It's, it's going to be up after. <laughs> But you're the red, even though you by yourself, you're still a ray of sunshine. Come on, come on, Glenn. You know what I'm saying? Come on. I knew, knew y'all my people. These is my people. Y'all understand? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's get started with Married at First Sight. We saw a lot of things this week. We're going to wait a little bit uh, and hit Chris and Alyssa in the middle. But let's start with my man, Steve and Noy. Uh, this week they met with Dr. Oh, Pastor Cal. I'm going to call it Dr. Cal. Pastor Cal. And the subject of Steve not having a job came up, and Noy was still a little bit disturbed. Let's start with Talisa. Your starts on Steve and Noy, and how do you perceive that conversation with Pastor Cal? And did Steve get it? I think Steve got it, but that's not Steve's juge. Steve mm -hmm. is a free spirit. Um, he felt for her. He held her hand and supported her as she cried and was vulnerable. Because, you know, she needs that stable environment because of what she's been through. But Steve was like, I it being, you know, in a regular sit-down job is not for me. It stifles my creativity. And I was just like, this is going to be a hard one for them because they're definitely imbalanced here. And the only way that this thing is going to kind of... Um, even itself out is if he becomes is me in my mind and what I said on my review when y'all see it is that he needs to get his own has have his own business and be a consultant have some kind of consultant firm for himself so that he can have some consistent income because that's what she's gonna need to see yes you have things bits and pieces here uh, that you do but you, she needs some consistency to uh, reassure her financially but um, that ain't the only problem they're gonna have it's gonna be that damn dog little sushi. Yeah. I think sushi is going to be one of the bigger things, bigger issues that, than the finances. I really feel like they're going to figure out how to navigate their way through it. If they stay together, they're going to have to figure it out because finances is the one thing that me and my late husband had an issue with. Um, and every time I wanted to leave him, it was because of finances. So the fact of the matter is, I feel, I feel like he has a, a good head to work through that, but she's not... Um, She doesn't have like common sense to me. Um, when I think about the dog, you know, he the dog has to stay in the bed. He's going to sleep in between us. Like you can't retrain the dog. And then, you know, you see that the dog was a little dog. He had to have stairs to get up there, which means you taught him and welcomed him into your bed when you were lonely. And I get it. I mean, I'm not that kind of a dog person. I have a couple dogs with their big dogs and they stay outside. And if I had a little dog, it wouldn't be in my bed. It just is not going to happen. I don't I don't see it. You're not going to be next to me with your butt in your face. I got a cousin, little Stewie. He's a dog because my cousin loves him so much that he sleeps in the bed with her. But when they come here, oh, no, don't get on my furniture. Don't get, you got a little bed over there. Don't get on my furniture. And so that's going to be a huge, as huge of a problem as finances. I um, mean, their their biggest problem, though, is that they're afraid to communicate to each other. They're afraid to talk about, I don't want the dog in my bed, and I don't want these LED lights at the house. Like, they are afraid to communicate the two things that are important to them. You know what I mean? And I think um, that's going to be their problem. She has to get out of la-la land, and they both need to have to, they both have to have a serious conversation. Like, it's all fun and games. She got all these little things in common. That's cute and everything, but it's real life. And real life says three kids could be unrealistic. You really need to think about what you're going to do with your finances. Um, that dog can't be in the bed, and then LED lights over the house. It's all over the house. It's tacky as hell. So you're going to have to figure all that out. Had a conversation. It's like, that's what you do. And I get that they're new, but I feel like all the foundations of all the real 
any relationship, no matter intimate or otherwise, is based on transparency, honesty, and the ability to communicate what you say. I'm going to say this one last thing that's so important to me. People always talk about uh, people don't know how to communicate. I think I said this before. If I ask you for a spoon, you're going to give me a spoon. If I ask you for a knife, you're going to give me a knife. The problem is that we don't communicate authentically in what we really feel for fear of what the other person is going to say. So we need to get out our own way and understand that my happiness is just as important as yours in this relationship. And boom, we could work. All right. Tommy Artiga, Stephen Noy. You want to start with I got it. I got it. Um. Yeah, Steve, Steve, like the, the biggest issue, I'm a, I love dogs when I had my dog, Rondo. Rondo used to sleep in the bed with me. He slept at the bottom of the bed, though. And if I had some company, this is pre-marriage, so if I had some company or anything, I never you know, met Rondo. Yeah, he would go to his home. He had a little cage. He'd go to his house and, you know, and everything else. <laughs> but um, that's going to be the biggest issue between them is that she's so <laughs> stuck on her single living and now that she's married it's like no you like this this is this man's bed as well you know what i'm saying like if he slept with a bird you wouldn't want him to bring that bird into y'all married bed so um she has to be open to getting well what she has to do is get used to sleeping with him and not sleeping with him and that dog um the second thing is kids aren't a hard number kids are always variable in a marriage because of what could possibly happen like you could possibly uh be going through some things or you know somebody uh somebody i don't know the word what's the word the appropriate word to say that somebody can't have children barren. somebody may not be barren they might be barren they be barren. That's it. <laughs> Somebody might be barren or something like that. You never know. So it's like you can't say that's a hard number. That's a, that's something I'm going to do. Or, you know, you have to adopt. Now, I don't know if that came <laughs> up in their conversation. I don't. I know it didn't come up with uh, Pastor Cal, but I don't know if that's something they talked about before as far as like what if we can't have children or or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you have to be open to the idea of we may not have children. That's like one of the scariest things with getting married because, you know, you're making a commitment and you're saying, yeah, I want children. <laughs> but we don't know until, we, you know, we actually have children if we can have children. So um, I think they like each other. And like Talisa was saying, they're afraid to actually have the conversations with each other um, just because they don't know how the other person is going to react. But I mean, that's a, right now is the time to rip the bandaid off. It's not a, it's a, it's a, a way to communicate it, but you still have to say, Hey, I don't like this. Like with Steve and, and the dog, we all watched his face say, I don't want this dog sleeping in the bed with me. So why not say that? I'm not comfortable with this dog sleeping in the bed with me. It's a, it's a simple conversation. And you guys discuss it, you know, um, because you guys are trying to build something. He's not trying to build anything with this dog. He don't even like take, picking up poop. Who does? Nobody. But I'm <laughs> just saying it's like it's a part of the, you know, of the, of the of the job. Like the dog can't pick up his own poop unless, you know, some type of trick, which I have yet to see that happen. So um, I just think uh, Noi needs to get out of her single life mindset and the idea that steve and then i'm done after this the idea that steve uh doesn't want to go back to work is cool but i think he needs to come up with some type <laughs> of plan to assure her that they're not going to like uh i don't want to say be poor but he's not going to be able to pull his weight in their marriage you know so what you got hon <laughs> so I start off with what you ended with, Steve and the job. I look at entrepreneurs, which is essentially what freelancing is, as you don't have a job. My stepdad is an entrepreneur. I have never said, you going into the office today? 
but he gets up and he works every single day. He has, you know, an income and he's built a life for him and my mom. So when I look at that, it's, I think it's, again, the clouded judgment around the word job and not the process of bringing in income. Because he was like, I can make money. I can do this. I can do that. I can do this. What we have to figure out is the reassurance of I don't want you to not have a job or is it the reassurance of I want you to have income? It's, because I those are two be different poor. things. That's the thing. I don't want to be poor. That's her whole her. But thing. if we can reassure that I have income to make sure that we're not poor, I don't need a job. That's true. But, just, but I'm just I just feel I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I just feel like he hasn't assured her on that. Like and, and it's early, it's early it's too. Ten days. It's early too, but I'm just saying that's like for me, and we had this discussion. It's like for me, it's like that's one of the number one things. It's been ten days, and seven of those days he didn't have to break out his card for anything because they were getting married on somebody else's dime yeah, and a honeymoon on You're somebody right. else's You're dime. Right. So I don't know what kind of reassurance he needed to do in three days, where we're living in somebody else's apartment that they're paying rent for. It's it's. I guess it's a matter of tell me what you need mm -hmm. and we can go from there. But if he doesn't see himself going back into this corporate job, cool. What are you going to do? You're going to right. do freelance work. Okay. She doesn't have to understand that. Right. She just needs to know that there's going to be some income coming from it. Yeah. I think that that's the, the overarching issue. Yeah. Now going back to this dog sushi. That's the dog name. Sushi. Yeah. I love dogs. However, I do not want said dogs sleeping in my bed. I also definitely do not want said dogs butt in my face. And that's what happens if Sushi's face is in Noi's face, where is Sushi's butt? In Steve's face. Steve has already said in so many words, look, let's find another arrangement for this dog. For whatever reason, she... She's not reading between the lines of what he's saying, and he's just going to have to come outright and be like, look, I'm not doing this. Yeah. He already looked at the bed when they walked into the apartment and was like, am I going to even fit in this? Now you want me, big, tall Steve, I mean, he's not big, but he's taller, to fit in this bed and then put this dog in between us in this bed and think that I'm going to be comfortable. Not going to happen. I understand I want to pick up the dog's poop. He didn't say he wouldn't. He just said he doesn't like to. That's already a nego like he's negotiating mm -hmm. there. Like, make me your last resort. Like, we have a friend who always tells us if we need somebody to watch our child, make sure she's the last one that we call. <laughs> like, I don't want to be first on your list. I don't even want to be in the top five. Like, <laughs> literally, have you called your mama from out of town? Did your auntie say she couldn't come? The last two babysitters backed out. Okay, then you can call me because she was like, I just don't do kids. And I can I can accept that. You've laid your boundary. Cool. Not going to call and ask you. What was the other thing? What were we talking about? The money, the dog, the kids. I was watching somebody else's um, review recently, and they said, what if you have two kids and get pregnant the third time and it's twins? You're going to just abandon the fourth baby because three was your magical number. That just does not make sense. Like as someone who was not expecting to have a small baby during a pandemic, you just do not know what life is going to throw at you. And, and that has nothing to do with how she acts as a kid. That's just environmental. Like that's something that I can't change. You just really don't know what's going to come your way in child bearing like ch child birth none of that like you might have that first baby and be like nah i can't do this <laughs> <laughs> and you just you don't know what you're going to get i think that it's way too rigid of a guideline to say i want three kids like my mom always said she wanted a boy and a girl it took her 11 years to get to me from my brother so i mean it's just you never know what you're gonna get you just got to try to figure it out. But I think that she needs to think beyond um, three kids 
into what can what are the possibilities that are out there because like you like you guys said you could not be able to have kids um you might have too many kids like you might come out with two sets of twins and then whoop, i got four kids what am i gonna do like you just don't know so i think she needs to let that go and she's really like no, that's not negotiable. I'm like, is it though? Because what if you are the one that can't have the kids? You're going to just throw yourself away? She just, it doesn't make sense to me. But that's all I have for Steve and Noy. I'm still Team Steve. I was on Team Steve and Noy, and Noy has just got on my nerves this week. Yeah. I just uh, want to say that, that uh, Artika, I mean, that Tommy, you're lucky to have Artika. <laughs> Wait, time out. Ain't she lucky to have me though? Listen, I'm Team Artika. I like you and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like you are lucky to have Artika because the wisdom that comes out of her mouth, okay? Like, I mean, you have it too. You do, you do. But you know, I'm just saying that's my girl. She just articulates better than I do. <laughs> it's in the that's name. all. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with Artika with that. When it comes to Noi with the kid situation, you may get one and realize, you know what, I can't even handle this one. Right, like, like one, you may your first one come out, maybe want to get you to pull your hair out, be like, you know what, this this ain't what I'm this ain't what I'm working with. I don't want the, the other three. And then again, you know, again, like you said, I left the twin point because you can get the two, and you do have twins. All right. Or you can get to two and they tell you, you know what, you can't have any more kids. We talked about this. Uh, you can get to two and they there's some, it almost killed you to get to two. Where you have some medical issues and, and problems and situations where you, it may not be in your best interest to go try and have another one because it could hurt you. And so she has to have this three number out of her head. You know, I remember my wife, she like, well, I didn't want two, right? She didn't want she she didn't want two kids. Well, no, she wanted two, but she wanted to try one more. And so we tried one more. And on the third time when we were getting ready to have one, we had a miscarriage, right? When we tried the third one, that could kick happens. And sometimes when women have miscarriages, it can do psychological stuff that you may not even want another one. You don't even want to try because you have dealt with the burden of losing a child. And so, but we tried to have, we tried again and we had a third one. But after that, the shop was closed. You know what I'm saying? Because you had so many, <laughs> and I'm sorry, y'all, shop's closed. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, but you get to that point where you're so obsessed with, a certain number or so obsessed with this that you forget the ones that you do have and, and being a, able to enjoy them. And not only the um, aspect of the kids, but how are you and Steve going to handle it? Cause you just, you right now, when you start adding a kid into a mix, it becomes a different dynamic. Now you have to share the love that you two had together with the kid. Then you add two kids in the, in the mix and it depends on the age gap. If you got two in diapers at the same time or one in this air stage in life and this one, that stage, it starts to affect your relationships. Or if you wait too long, you got a teenager and you got a toddler. And so you don't want to be able to be shifting in those age groups. So she has to be cautious about saying, I want three. And that's the deal breaker if I don't get three. That makes that makes no sense at all. Um, the jobs. Can I talk about that real ahead. quick? But that's why I like, um, like uh, what Artika and Tommy were saying, too. Because for one, again, yeah, you could be barren slash infertile. You, it might not be nothing coming out of there. Might not be nothing coming out of there. Um, he might be shooting blanks. Like, yeah, might be her, might be him. You never know. Um, same thing with us. You know, like you said, really, my my number was originally four, and I was like, okay, I like four, but let's try for three. We had our two, and the two came right back to back, and I was like, uh -huh, uh -huh. I, uh, I had two toddlers. And he worked night shift, and I was like, I cannot do it. And I, man, I think I was uh, overdosing on birth control pills. <laughs> <laughs> and so then when I was like, okay, I feel good, you know, let's have another one. It took a minute. It took a minute. And then, like he said, it, we had the miss, is, yeah. yeah, we had the miscarriage. And then again, I, I could really relate. When we had the miscarriage, I was like, I don't know if I want to have another baby. It was like, if God wants it to be, it'll be. And we ended up having our youngest, but you never know. And then on top of that, I had three C-sections. So it's a multiplicity of factors that go into that. You can't get stuck on that number. And I like what Steve brought out. There's like, again, what if you have one 
with a physical ailment, a, a mental, you know, some kind of cycle. You don't, it takes a lot to deal with a special needs child. And yeah. so, you know, if we have a special needs child and then like Artika said, if you have one, then you have twins. What if you have twins the first time? And you try the second time, and that's twins or triplets. What you gonna do? Sure. Somebody, I got two kids for adoption. I got a set of three, but I don't want but one of them. <laughs> right. No, well, that ain't gonna happen. You know what? They don't break. You can't break. What if I? What she could pregnant the first time? She had no triplets. I mean, quadruplets. You. I mean, it's it's so many things, but you. Yeah, you can't. You definitely can't get stuck on that number. And then you were about to say something about the job, which I was gonna bring out too. Go ahead. Again, I could relate to. What they were talking about so much, you know what I mean? Um, uh, having a, a spouse at one time, we went to a point where my husband had lost his job. Mm -hmm. But like Artika said, it's not what he got. He didn't get a nine to five per se, but he got something to bring income in. So what are you hung up on? Are you hung up on job? Or are you hung up on income? If, it, if there's money coming in, I understand I understand, you know, when, when you uh, deal with somebody that's an entrepreneur or a freelancer, we know in, in business, things can go up and down. Things can go up and down. So I understand her um, her trepidation there. But like I think Artika and Tommy and uh, Talisa, I think you touched on too. What she needs is a plan, though. Be able to say to her, hey, this is what I'm going to do. You got to make her feel secure. And that's what Steve will have to do. And I'll let you talk about the job yeah, thing. Everything I was hustling. I was hustling. <laughs> you know, but uh, <laughs> hustling this. Man, yeah, you he mean? was. You know, hustling security systems, whatever. But again, you but at that point, you got to make a breakdown. Okay, what is our budget? Right? What do we need to live on? And can we sustain if Steve doesn't make any income that month? You know, he talks about his IT or his computer, stuff like that. Um he can have a job every day or he can do consultant stuff where he can make enough money in one, in one instance where it covers him for the whole, you know, three or four months. Mm -hmm. So it could be that aspect of it. And then three or four months, he don't have anything. Right. So again, they're going to have to learn how to manage his freelancing ability and job. I think our you said something that was really true. We get caught up on the word job and not income. And, and, and I think that's the biggest thing. If I don't go to a nine and five, but I can still bring in 50, 60, 70, 80, $90,000 a year. Am I, are we good or do you just want me to punch in, right? <laughs> punch in, punch in and be away from you or be away from family or be away from home, right? So it becomes, again, like you said, I think that was that was a good point. That is, is, is it, and, and he has to ask her, what is your security gland? Is it that me going to work or is it me bringing in the money? Because I can bring in the money and still stay at home. And if she wants three kids, what if he can stay at home and watch the three kids while she still work, right? So now you're saving money on daycare. All of us with kids understand Daycare is expensive. Ooh -wee. And if you have multiple kids in daycare at the same time, Ooh. They, they ain't give you that much a break. You, most of your money is going most of your money going to daycare. So if you Man. can make the money, if you can be freelancing and stay at home and watch the kids, you kind of balance it kind of balance itself out. Mm -hmm. And that's good. And the last point is about the dog. I'm sorry, y'all. I like animals. I said this on our review. I can't sleep with sushi. Right? The bed is already tight as it is anyway, right? I don't want to be shooing a dog out the way when it's time for romantic time, right? I don't want the dog to be looking at me when it's time for romantic. <laughs> he, he, you know, you up there doing your business and sushi like they're like, "What's going on, dog?" Right? <laughs> Look, looking at you like, "Hold on for a minute," <laughs> you know. <laughs> so you, you don't want none of that going on. So she go ahead and go ahead and get out for a minute. But again, she has to. And I do agree with you, Tommy. He should have said something at that point where he should have said, "You know what? I'm not comfortable sleeping with a dog." And she should have caught the hint. I was like, no, you being real slow right now. And she should have caught He is saying, he don't, he was like, oh, well, so we bringing the bed, but Sushi not going to sleep in the bed? No. I think Sushi should sleep in the bed. No. <laughs> you, you can always move. You can't you move. She was like, well, she's, Sushi's used to, mm -mm. he is trying to tell you, catch the hint, Noy. But it's going to lead. Move the dog. It's going to lead to a lot of issues because they can't communicate. Mm -hmm. because she can't communicate about the LED lights. He can't communicate oh, yeah, about the dog. True. So when it becomes major issues, and when Pastor Cal is not there, or Dr. Viviana is not there, or Dr. Pepper is not there, how do you communicate about major in situations, issues? Because she yet had to tell, she has yet to tell Steve anything about the job that we've seen unless Pastor Cal or somebody was there. She spoke to his family. She spoke to her family, but she hasn't spoke directly to Steve. I think she has an issue. And we have Miss Chloe. Chloe, 
How are you doing? You didn't miss much. Yeah. Just gonna... <laughs> We're just talking about Stephen Noy. So it is your turn. The floor is yours. <laughs> um, Stephen Noy. So with the dog, Steve not here for that dog. <laughs> Steve is not here for that dog whatsoever, child. So um, I think that Sushi is an emotional support dog for, um, what's that girl name? Noi. Um, and I think that's why, because when she was talking about it, she seemed like she had anxiety even thinking about not being with that dog or not having the dog around. And um, she's going to have to really talk to him about her needs when it comes to this dog, and they're going to have to set boundaries. Um, the dog can't be in the bed. The dog just can't be in the bed. Now, if the dog sleep at the bottom of the bed, he was even trying to get the dog to be on her side of the bed. He like, the dog just can't be in the middle of us. Definitely not on our pillow. She's trying to get the dog the own pillow in that bed. I said, oh, no. Mm -mm. Um, I just feel like Steve, right, Steve needs to just tell her, like, I'm not here for that. It's like he's trying to avoid the confrontation of the conversation that needs to happen. Um, because what's going to happen is he's going to be upset, he's going to get resentful, and he's not going to want to deal with it at all. And he's not going to like the dog. And I think he doesn't have a problem with the dog, but eventually it gets to the point where he just don't like the dog in general. And then that will be a bigger conflict than what they got dealing with just keeping the dog out the bed. Um, what else? The children thing, I'm so annoyed. <laughs> like, I'm sure y'all already discussed this, but when I was in my early 20s, I didn't want no kids. None, not even one. God gave me a daughter at 23. And I was like, I don't, I'm done. One and done, one and done. I just recently had a miscarriage a couple of months ago. And now I want another one. So I feel like you never know what God has in store for you when it comes to having children. You can say, I want to have three, I want to have four. But there's so many things people get. My one of my best friends have high blood pressure from her last child, delivered that child five months. She like, I'm done. I am done. I don't want nothing. So like, I feel like for her to make it a deal breaker is like beyond me. Um, especially when people die from giving birth, you know, like that's a thing. So for her to make it seem like, oh, it's all or nothing. I'm going to have three. You going to give me three. You don't even know if you can have children, sis. Like, give it some, give it some time. You tell him you want three. He says he's fine. We have it three of time. If God permits it, right? If the finances, the time, the, um, the patience, all that permits it, then that's fine. The fact that you both agree on having kids should just be enough for now. The amount should not be a deal breaker. Like you both want kids. Cool. Now we can move on. We could discuss how many as we have kids. Once we have one, you want to have another one. Cool. Once we have two, you want to have another one? Maybe. My mother had two sets of twins. I'm a twin. My brother, the twins, after she had her first child, you thought she was going to end up with five kids? You think she woke up and was like, I'm going to have five kids today. Nope. <laughs> like, life happens. So for you to just put a number on it is beyond me. Way beyond me. So she, I think it's just something she's finally probably going to get in her mind because after Pastor Cal said it, she said, I never thought about that. Right, because you sound childish. You sound real childish. That's what it is. And I'm here for the LED lights of it all. I don't care what y'all say. Care what y'all say. <laughs> okay? You put the LED lights on, I don't have none, but I think I'm going to get some, right? And when you want to have your red night special, you know, you turn it down onto the red and you let the music play in the background, okay? And then when you want to have, you know, a little, you know, turn up, you let it blink, 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 and you have a whole concert in your bedroom, in your living room or whatever. I'm here for the LED lights. Let Steve have his LED lights. <laughs> man, I'm for him in the bedroom, but when he, my man's talking about the kitchen and the bathroom, how the LED lights, <laughs> I, I can't, I can't do the bathroom in the kitchen with LED lights. Every kid in my house has LED lights. All right? of them. All of them. Yeah. I, understand, I understand the LED lights. I, I can rock with it. But when you start talking about, well, I'm going to the bathroom, I'm going to put a You can't decorate the whole house with LED lights. You got to set a boundary for them. Like, Tommy has LED lights on the back of uh, our TV and our den. And he's talking about putting them on the TV in our bedroom. I'm like, I never turn these lights on. But the thing is, is LED light right here, too. And he says the LED light. <laughs> I don't turn these lights on. He rarely turns these lights on. It's just literally like the thought of, oh, they're there. I like the idea of them. He said it's the option. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Yeah. And the last piece, the um, the finances. I just hate that they just in the way. I just hate it, um, because she's literally so emotionally like emotional about it to the point where she's crying. Like mm -hmm. it's not like oh we're gonna figure it out, we're gonna be okay. Like she's distraught over the fact that she does. She's scared of the future. That's a problem. Like why would you want someone who wants stability and give her someone who wants to be free? That doesn't make sense. Now I don't have a um. I don't have like I don't think that he will have a problem making money because he's into IT. Once you get into the computers, it's it's all fair game. But at the end of the day, 401k, health insurance, these things go into part of being stable when you start having kids. How you gonna be like your kids gotta go to the doctor? You gotta have some money when you die. Like, come on. <laughs> I mean, not when you die, Jesus, not die, but you gotta have some money. It's like it's a whole thing to it. I'm not saying that he can't do that, but if he wants to be an entrepreneur, then he needs to start a business and then build on top of that business. Don't say I'm doing web design, I'm doing logos, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. No, 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 no. See you all over the place and nothing's structured. Pick something, mm -hmm. build it. Then you can add in, oh, I also do this with this service. I also do this with this service and build a business. But he's so all over the place, it's not giving anything stable for her. And she needs stability. And for them to give her someone who wants to be all over the place, it's just beyond me at this point. And that's it. <laughs> no, I think that's a good point because, we, you know, we talked about, she really talked about her background. And I'm not saying she's going to ever go back to the refugee camp. And I think that's what her fear is. You know, her fear is that we're going to be poor and we're going to be this. She has to look at, too, this dude has sustained himself without a job, um, a job for four months when he was traveling across the country. You know, I think they should do what um, I think it was Miller and Gill last season where they like, OK, what's your finances look like? All right, you're back home now. You're not off the honeymoon. OK, let me see. Let me see what your bank account looked like. Let me see what your finances look like. What do you bring in when you're doing your freelance stuff? And let's work something out. I think that's where, and you're right. When you're all over the board, sometimes you mess up. But you said deaf. He do need some life insurance. We talking about having three oh, yeah, kids. You need life insurance. <laughs> when, you, when you check up out of here, somebody need to be able to take care. You know, take yes, care sure. of some of the things. Ah, speaking of husbands, let's go to this one: Katina and Elijah Juan. Katina, <laughs> Elijah Juan, and Chloe. We're gonna start with you because you know, you know, <laughs> Elijah Juan said that he gets when he before he got married, he got peanut butter sandwiches in the morning. And now because he has a wife, he expects meals every day, breakfast. But, Chloe, we're going to start with you. Go ahead. I'm just trying to figure out why he still can't eat his peanut butter and bread. <laughs> like, who said thou has a wife now no longer eats peanut butter and bread? Like, boy, if you don't go in there and get your peanut butter and bread, go away about your business. And then she's talking about some. So you're going to be asking me to make your breakfast at 7 o'clock? Not I. Not I. Excuse me. Not who? First of all. Elijah Wan be lying, okay? Let me tell y'all. Elijah Wan tried to tell Pastor Cal in a little meeting in the beginning that it wasn't that it wasn't a deal breaker for him. It wasn't, you know, something he must have. Then he get up there and tell Katina, oh no, it's like kind of a requirement for my wife. Like she needs to be in the kitchen cooking, blah, 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 blah. Elijah Wan be lying. Okay. I don't know what's up with him, and I'm trying to figure him out. Because I feel like he tell Pastor Cal whatever he wants to hear, and then he does the, he does the total opposite to Katina. I don't like that. Because even when he said to Katina, I told her we could both be making breakfast together when Pastor Cal was right there, right? But then he just tell Katina in that kitchen that he expect her to make breakfast for him every morning. I'm like, you just saying what he want to hear so you can make it seem like you doing what you're supposed to do? Absolutely not. I, he, Elijah has ADHD, right? Is that what it's called? It's making sense. It's slowly starting to make sense. And I forgot about that in his actions. And this is why he's so much. I just, that's why I'm trying to give him a little bit of grace. But he's controlling. It's coming out slowly, but surely. He is controlling. Um, the simple facts that he don't want to have sex with her. Because he feel like, oh, he's going to be, a, if, if it don't work out, he'll be considered an F-boy for having sex for her, with her. The fact that he's trying to get her to cook, go to the grocery store, do all these things. He don't want to change the, 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 the paint, okay, because of the floors and all this other stuff. Um, hold my hand, hold my hand. Look at the house, look at the house. We're going to have the kids running in and out right here. You see it? Look at the house. He has controlling ways about him. 
and they're slowly starting to slip out. And I'm just going to sit here because when it happened, I'm going to be like, I told y'all. I told y'all. Katina, she's a straight shooter when she want to be. She act like she got all this mouth, but when it comes to Elijah Wan, she never give him that energy that she still got with Lindsay. And I be like, sis, you better come on and step up and say something because what he's doing is starting to walk all over you. He's training you and molding you to be the type of woman he wants you to be and you're allowing it. This is why he's testing her. He's testing her to see how far he could push her and, and how long it's going to take her to say something. And she just keep falling into these little old traps, just falling into it and thinking that it's all okay. Instead of calling him out on his BS and making him correct it, it's going to be a problem. They going they that's going to be some toxic situation. I see it happening. That's all I got. Uh, <laughs> to, Lisa, to Lisa Ray, your Elijah wanted Katina analysis. Well, we're only on episode seven. I said I would give him grace until episode eight, and I'm going to stick to that. <laughs> However, I do want to say that um, when he was talking to Pastor Cal, and thank you for the reminder about the ADHD, it does the reminder because I forgot, and it is making a lot of sense to me why he's all over the place, because mm -hmm. he has all these competing ideas um, in his head and can't nail down one. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Oh, I had a whole ass thought. <laughs> um, but um, when he, there we go. When he was talking to Pastor Cal, what I saw in him was the kid. It was the uh, the kid. Oh, I'm listening. Oh, I'm nervous. Oh, I'm afraid. Oh, wait a minute. It's making sense. You see the um, the doubt, the insecurity showing up in him when he's having the conversations right then and there. And so I said to myself, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what he's supposed to do. Um, and I was glad that Pastor Cal called him out on the misogyny about the barefoot and pregnant and, and, and in the kitchen, because that's how I saw him from day one. OK, and like I said, I've been trying to give him grace. And although he said it sitting in front of Pastor Cal, the what well, didn't I tell you that I was going to make some breakfast? I was going to help you with breakfast. I believe that he is going to. It's going to be. Peanut butter, peanut butter and bread. He going to toast the peanut butter and bread, but he going to do some breakfast every now and again. Maybe he needs to learn how to do oatmeal jars to put them in the refrigerator so they made and you can get them in, out in the morning and it's easy, but he does need to contribute. Um, so I really, I'm still really trying to give him grace, but I'm looking at, I'm looking at Katina and I'm saying to myself, so sis is real refined. We see her having control over her emotions very well as she's speaking to him on camera. And I'm wondering what it looks like off camera. I'm wondering what the conversations look like off camera. She can't possibly not be having more conversations. She feels like, to me, she feels like the person who, I don't want to put all my business out. What's her name? What's her name? What's her name? You know, the, the, what's her name? Yes. She feels like that to me, but mm. not as bad. Um, like she's gonna have the conversation, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it right here. I'm gonna just say enough to let you hear me, but you're gonna hear me. And that's my hope because I would hate that what we're seeing as her resigning on camera all the time um is not really what she's doing. Because like Chloe said, if that's the case, then he is priming her and prepping her like pimps do, so that you can go ahead and do what I'm asking you to do, do what I say as I say it. Right. And so for me, that would be an issue. So my hope is that she is behind the scenes, though she's nice and refined in front of us and saying things real nice and giving a little piece here and there that she's giving it to him behind the scenes. Like, hey, yo, this ain't it. Um, and that whole sex thing. <laughs> so I kind of feel like I kind of feel like, oh, Lord, I kind of feel like he hold now because, you know, maybe it's a little little missing. Yes, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like I kind of feel like he don't want to be like I kinda, I'm all like flustered over here, like literally, like I kind of feel like he ain't working with nothing, and so he's holding out and kind of whining her. Yeah, that could be also why Isaac was running through the women like he was, because you know he wasn't really able to sustain himself <laughs> in that area. I feel so bad for saying it, but I'm all like, yo. Dude ain't working with nothing because by now she's a very attractive woman. Something would have been happening. I don't care. Isaac was too much of an F boy of a, of a, you know, for the street for him not <laughs> trying nothing with her. And so in my mind, I'm all like, yo ain't, yo ain't really working with nothing. 
So he just trying to like get, you know what they tell they <laughs> what they say is get their mind first. You know, that's that's even pimp mentality is get your mind first and then everything else is going to be, you know, everything else is going to follow. Get her mind. You know what I'm saying? And so it's me and my hood self talking, y'all. I'm sorry, but I really feel like, you know, he ain't got it. He just got the gift of gab. He's semi attractive. He was a football player. He has a home. And then here go my thing. Every season I say the same thing about the home. Because, you know, she's saying he's needs like uh, affirm, uh, affirming that she likes the house and the decor and the whatever. And so I'm all like, it's going to be a problem. She wants to make changes. And he's all like, oh, no, you just go just come in the house and just enjoy it. I don't want don't move into nobody's house. OK, that's my recommendation. And it's going to always be my recommendation. It is a bad move to uproot yourself and move into mm-hmm. somebody else's house. They house that they have stability in that they, you know, decorated. And he was proud about the gym and all of this. Listen, sis, he gonna be hollering how is his house? Oh, he oh they selling that house because he did not let him keep that house. Not that name, honey. Do you think? Do you think he he? That's gonna be a whole uh, quarrel in itself about the oh, house. They not gonna, gonna, yeah, that whole house situation is not gonna go. That that's not gonna go nice. That's not going to go nice. And hopefully she likes him enough because y'all know how it is when we be liking somebody. You know, everything we be like when we when we into you and really feeling you and feel like you're a good guy, all the other stuff, we'd be like, oh, no, it's great. It's great because sex is 80 percent mental. It's the 20 percent is the other part. So hopefully that's why he's really trying to uh, listen. I'm done. I'm getting my little ghetto self off of talking. Let me just... <laughs> You are, you are perfectly, you are perfectly fine. You are I've been perfectly trying fine. to really like curb tail my stuff when I'm on other people's channels because my little ghetto self, honey, want to say all kind of stuff, and I just be like, okay, calm down, relax, relax. Hey, be who, be who you are. Be who you are. August, August love story. I'm going to start off by saying, don't ask me questions that you don't want to know the answer to. Those Goodwill coffee curtains were ugly. That's something that your grandmama or your mama picked out because you needed some curtains in your kitchen. Don't ask me if they look nice. No, they do not. Don't ask me if your kitchen is nice if you're not going to take the suggestion that, hey, I think we should change the wall color. Is your gym nice? No. Who picked this ugly color of green to go in the gym? Why? No, it's ugly. Like, it's okay. Things need to be changed. And one of the things that I mentioned in our review, like, Tommy and I bought our first home together, like in the relationship. But when we started dating and we moved in together, I moved into his apartment and then we got our own apartment. It was like pulling teeth to get him to throw away stuff. Like I had a couch, he had a futon, and he was like, we keep the both of them. Why? We got a couch. Because I didn't, I had a futon. That's (laughs) why. It's like I got furniture now. (laughs) So I completely get the whole like it it has to be even harder when it's not just the material possessions in the house because like we were beefing about a couch and a futon. She's taking it to the I think we might need to change out the kitchen cabinets, change some color, put a new backsplash up. Like he really not going because this is my house. At least now with us. We're both in agreement on the changes that we want to make in the house. We're like, okay, we don't like this collectively. What can we do to change it to make it the two of us? But I just look at that and I'm like, girl, I'm sorry for you, but I I couldn't do it. Like, this stuff is ugly. You try to be really nice about telling him that you did not like it. And he wasn't taking it's not my taste in like the way that it should have been taken because like saying something's not my taste like she didn't outright say his stuff was ugly she was just like it's not my style and y'all can accept that but he doesn't want to accept it because obviously it's his style or whoever he had come paint this stuff for him but i do think that um katina has the potential to stop all of his pushing because we've seen her of course it was with Lindsay, but we've seen her like go the extra mile and i'm gonna pop off on you because what you're not gonna do is this 
I do think that she has a little bit of that off camera and she's not trying to be that on camera. So she sits, she waits, she writes these mental notes in her head. And when the camera cuts out, she tells him what you're not going to do is this. I just think that she needs to do some of that on camera as well. Not saying she has to go that far with it, but when he's asking all these questions, I'm just like, dude, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay that she doesn't like it. A lot of people not going to like your kitchen. A lot of people going to think that color green in the gym is ugly, but you know, she don't have to go down there. Cause if I was her, I would never work out with you again. So that's the easy way to keep me out your ugly green gym. You got something? Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, a large one, his uh, misogyny is showing. As y'all be like, your slip is showing. His misogyny is showing. And I hate that about like people's ideas of how a woman should be in a marriage. Um, that's what my grandmother did, you know. She cooked every day. She cleaned. But my grandmother didn't work, you know, which made sense. But nowadays, and, and they, like, we have this big discussion with people and the Internet about <laughs> if a man should pay for everything you know i'm like it's a like a man ain't married to himself and with today's time it's like man it's 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 unfair to both parties it's unfair to in this situation it's unfair to katina for him to think that that's her job is to cook it bothers me to my core um and it's unfair to him um, just so that that's what she does, you know, on the flip side, because if she was like, took him literally, okay, I'm a cook, but you take care of everything else. That's not a fair trade to me. Cause I can cook for myself. I don't need you to cook. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to build something with you. So I hate that line of thinking. Um, also with the sex thing, the sex thing bothered me too, because it's like, Katina, you have to speak up. You sit there and don't say anything. I'm going to just keep doing what I'm doing. Just because it doesn't mean, like, you're not telling me I'm doing something wrong. If you're letting me do this or or if if I, if I Lily just, you know, every day gets up, goes in the refrigerator and get a beer, right? She, she doesn't do that because we don't drink beer <laughs> like that. But if she did that, we obviously know that that's wrong. But if we don't say, hey, stop or get out of there. She's going to continue to do it. And then it's going to get to a point to where it's detrimental to her. You know what I'm saying? So it's like Katina must step up and say, hey, I don't like this. And and off camera, on camera, she needs to check him. Mm -hmm. He needs to stop testing her like she's some child or something. But she needs to nip that in the bud because, like, now is the time for you to show yourself. Now is the time that this is who I am, you know. You're going to hate it or love it. We got eight weeks or at this point, what, six, seven, six, okay. seven weeks to make a decision on if I want to spend the rest of my life with you or, you know, go past the 10, whatever. And so it's like, step up, say something. Elijah, one quick acting like a child, quit coming in, in this thing with, with the idea that a woman should be uh, barefoot and pregnant and cook for me. Because that's essentially what his idea is. And he knows it sounds bad. That's the thing. He knows that, no, I don't want it to sound that way, but she, I want her to cook for me. And I'll say this, like, saying that you want your wife barefoot and pregnant is not a bad thing, but you need to go and seek out a woman that wants to be barefoot and pregnant. You don't go find a woman that wants to be a career woman and be like, no, I need you to have a career and I need you to come home and cook every single night because that's not what she is tr striving to be. You're trying to mold her into what you want her to be. Now, something she did say was she'll make sure he's fed every day, but she's not cooking. Elijah one needs to go order him some Hello Fresh, and he needs to learn how to <laughs> he chop, she sautés. We put some stuff in the oven, and we figure it out together because somebody's got to give in this, and I, I think it needs to be Elijah one. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> like. <laughs> I just I can't be like Katina's like you will eat and that is the important part it's kind of like the income with Steve and Noy the money is there 
we need to eat. We can eat healthy. However, am I going to be the one to go in the kitchen and mm -hmm. make sure that everything is like in a skillet or a pot for you? No, that's not me. But I get it. She just has to say it like more directly to him. I just don't feel like they, yeah, like they, he dictates too much. And she doesn't, like, it's not a planned thing. Like, if he's like, mm -hmm. oh, I like my lady to cook. But now how she's you, in the cooking. Right. How do you like to do? Like, what do you like to do? And, and then, Chloe said it best. You was eating a peanut butter sandwich beforehand. In what part of <laughs> the um, the contract of marriage did it say you had to stop doing it? Right. I don't, I, I don't understand I that at all. I didn't say you had to. No, no. <laughs> That don't, that don't make sense to me at all. Like, what if y'all wake up at different times? She ain't finna get up and cook you nothing, and you not finna get up and cook her nothing. Right, or so, what if her job, takes, her job takes her out of town? Right, right. It's and like, you know that one, the one time she, when, when Pastor Kyle came in and she said, I cook spaghetti and garlic bread because y'all know that's his requirement, I said... That was sarcasm. Yeah. She was yeah. just yeah. Was sarcasm. Yeah. She was a 1950 cell phone. She thought, she's thinking in her head that this is what he really requires of me as a wife. And I think she's starting to second guess whether or not this is something she wants altogether. Because you saw how she sat down and she looked at him when she said to Pastor Kyle, like, and then yeah. when he said, oh, I didn't say it was a deal breaker. And she was she was like, oh, you didn't tell him it was a deal breaker. Like, what? Yeah, Wait, you told him what? Pastor pulled his coattail and said, you didn't mm -hmm. say it was a, a deal breaker. You did not say that this was a requirement for you. Yeah. Right. So, sir, what are you talking about? Like, it can't, yeah. it can't be a deal breaker. breaker. He's still trying to convince himself. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it can't. It can't be a deal breaker in 2022. Okay. Like, wow. I, I'm a witness. Like, my mother was a public health nurse, so she worked nine to five, and she still came home. And she, we either had dinner fixed or she fixed it. But she came, my mom was born in 1937. You know what I'm saying? So let's go back to her Her mom and everything. They were housewives, like you said, Tommy. You know what I'm saying? And it can't be a deal breaker with you. I was gonna say the same thing as you, um, Artika, just like Stephen Noy. Is, is the goal to have nutrition, <laughs> sustenance, or is it for me to cook? Because you going to eat. We going to eat. We not going to starve. But I'm not getting in that kitchen. I said on our review, when you get married, you don't get married to come down from where you were already at. Were you eating before you got married? Then let then we do this. We're going to build upon that. If I cook something for you, that's an added thing. If I don't cook something for you, you still going to eat. Because you was eating before you got here. I said the same thing. You can still, honey, still grab your peanut butter and your bread sandwich and go right on out the door. Because if you go to work at six o'clock, I'm talking about Jackie. You go to work at six o'clock, I promise you, I will not be up and fixing no breakfast at no six o'clock. Now, if you want it at eight, I can help you with that, but not at six. She won't so be up at six. I'm not gonna get. I, he know. He know. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I don't have to start work till seven thirty. I'm not getting up at six. Um, you know what I'm saying? And then I, I felt like again that was a little bit of testing too when he was talking about the breakfast thing. You know, it's like, let me see how far I can push her. Let me see if she's going to give in to, okay, I'll fix you breakfast every day. Yeah, okay, got that. That worked. Let me try some other things. It was some testing. Um, For the for the sex thing, mm, okay, Elijah, stop it. Stop, <laughs> stop. I was like... Bruh, you 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 like it some confidence in that area. That's what it is. What if she don't like? Yeah. So that's what's holding you back because he probably used to. I thought about this with um Keith. It was Keith, right? Keith and Iris. Keith, Keith's thing with Iris was I, but this me. Keith was used to women falling all over him and just throwing the candy dish at him. And Iris didn't do that. I think it's the same thing with Elijah one. He's used to women just falling over him. That's how he was. That's how Isaac was getting it. You know what I'm saying? They was like, oh, my God, he got muscles. Oh, my God. He played football. And they was like dropping the draws. And Katina seen him and was like, okay, I like it. 
and she ain't just drop them right away. He like, oh shoot, I gotta do some work. Ugh. Ah, the tricks I used to work, I used to use it. It's not gonna work this time. Ugh, I gotta find a different way. So he he's trying to come up with something, you know what I'm saying? And then he really, yeah, I'm, I, I'm with you, Chloe and Talise. I think he's like, mm, ah, let me go look at these some books and some videos because I'm gonna have to try something different with her. So I think he he's feeling inadequate, like, I don't know. Cause ain't no way, ain't no way you was out there uh screwing and scrumping like that. And now all of a sudden you like, no, I'll wait. He's trying I'll to take make, mine later. He's trying to make sure his marriage is right, according to him. I mean, he's quotation marks. But even this, when if you watch after party, Keisha asked that. It's like, okay, so how are y'all doing that? Do you have a code word? Like, no, stop. She Can't said, don't even get there. Right. She said, she said they don't do that. They don't do no heavy petting. They mm -hmm. don't do the stuff that will go in that direction. So how is he controlling That's himself? You know what I mean? The question, the million question is how is he controlling himself? We'll get to, we'll get to Lindsay later, but again, how is he controlled? How is he controlling himself oh. to being Isaac to being Don't get me started. So don't get me started. How is he, how is he, because if he, you can't yeah. go with Isaac who's getting it on a regular with women all over the place to not getting it now on a regular basis. Something's going on with Elijah mm -hmm. that he's, he's fulfilling his need. Listen, it's, it's a grown folks channel. Let's talk. Let's have Listen, no, my first thing is this. My <laughs> pastor, my old pastor used to say this. If you're dating a man and he is not trying to be all over you, you need to stop and pause and question what he, what's happening. Even if you both agree to abstain, to be celibate until you get married. The man is going to try it. He's going to try. He's going to rub up on you. Y'all going to be grinding and whatnot. Something is happening. If he is not, there's only one of two things that could be happening. He's really not that interested in you. You are not his type. He is not on your team. Or there is someone else he is fooling with. So what, what is the what is the thing? And I'm not trying to say either of those for him. <laughs> um, you know. Even though I'd be feeling like men be over men that overcompensate with the whole Isaac situation, having some other stuff happening. But mm -hmm. I ain't gonna talk about that because it's not it's not episode eight. I'm gonna chill out a little bit. <laughs> I just said that you, it's something. What what is this? What is that thing? What which I'll give you a third maybe, thing. It don't maybe, work. Maybe they're oh. running. What was that? She said I'll do a third thing. thing. It doesn't work. He's not into you. He got somebody else, or it doesn't work. It don't work. I like the third one. <laughs> maybe, maybe they lied to us like Ryan and Claire. Let me tell you something. If they gave that girl somebody who things don't work, we got a problem. We got a whole problem. <laughs> I mean, it got to at least work. Now, I could, I could show you a thing or two, but it got to at least work. It got to work with the shortness, but it got to work. It got to work. He got a mouth. Where you at, Tommy? Where you at, Tommy? I need you, Tommy, by myself. What's up, I'm by myself. They're talking bad. He said he needs the chicken right now. He's going to be right back. Uh, but what I want to say, if you really look at Katina, when all the time Elijah one brought up the cooking, <laughs> the cooking situation, she really was talking out of the side of her neck. When I mean, she was slick talking, trying to get back at him. Oh, you eat? No, I'm gonna bring you some food from this restaurant I just reviewed. <laughs> you gonna get this restaurant? You can get this reviewed restaurant food. But I'm not gonna be in this kitchen, in this kitchen cooking all the time. If he really wants her to cook and he wants to build a relationship up, what needs to happen is they need to, like I said, Hello Fresh, uh, do something where they can cook together. Okay. Elijah, on what did you, I know you didn't eat peanut butter sandwiches every day, three meals for three meals a day. How did you eat, right? Did you go to your sister's house, your brother's house all the time to eat? What did you do? Okay. Hey, and even for her transparency, I don't cook very well. I only can cook this. I don't expect you to cook every day. You'd be like, you know, I don't expect you to cook every night, but what can we do? How can we eat? How can we partner together? And I think that's the where the communication comes in at. It's not about the cooking every night because that, that viewpoint is all. You know, like I said, my mom, my mom still cooks for my dad every day, right? She my mother, a but my mother been a housewife. When I get got married, I didn't bring that into my marriage because, again, I lived in college. I lived in my own apartment. No, I love to cook. I was gonna be mm -hmm. a chef, mm -hmm. right? But I lived in my own apartment. I knew how to cook. 
So I, didn't, I came into the marriage like, okay, you work. Let's find our schedules. Even we had different schedules. Matter of fact, truth be told, she'll tell you, I cooked so much one time. where she's like, Dan, can you let me cook? Can you let me be a woman and cook? No, not even let me be a woman. But I was like, what well, yeah, yeah. am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? I want to do something. Because right. I didn't want my kids thinking, oh, my daddy cook all the time. My mama don't cook nothing. She can't cook. But like, that's what my daughter say all the time. I don't cook. Look. My so husband yeah. teaching my daughter how to cook. I'm the one that don't cook. They be looking I at me crazy. Right. So y'all gotta, gotta have that balance. You gotta have that balance in there. I think that's what he he doesn't understand. It can be a balance. It can be a thing that we can do together. That's good. We can take that Hello Fresh recipe card and, and go to work, right? Or we get these meals that you ain't gotta cook it, right? And we ain't gotta cook. We just throw that bad boy in the microwave and the food is good. So that's that's one of the things that's there. Um, the sex thing, Elijah won't want sex for that girl. Right, he wants sex for some way. I think they're having sex, just not telling everybody. I think they're lying. I think they're having. I think they're having sex because if you see the way he be hugging up on her, grabbing her booty, laying in the bed, and they look all all cuddling, all nice and neat. Now she, he might be too sweaty for her. Maybe she don't want it because because she said he was too sweaty. Right, he, he's sweating too much, and that's a whole different. I'm not going into allegations and all that, but he's he's sweaty, he's sweating a lot. Right, <laughs> but again, she may not want that as well. But again, you married. And at this point, 10 days in, and I know you don't see her naked, right? Well, hopefully you have, right? And hopefully she doesn't see you. There got to be something going on, heavy petting or whatever case may be. But again, especially from, and this is why I think he's, he's kind of lying. For a person who wanted to be married so bad and who wanted to be in, engaged in a relationship though, and, and do every aspect of marriage so bad, and you're not trying your wife who you love and she looks beautiful and all this after 10 days, no, nah, somebody lying. It was the one other thing I wanted to say that, and I just had a little jokey do joke um, about the house thing. So for us, when he moved down here, he moved in where I was, but I didn't make him feel like he was moving into my house. It was our house. As soon as I had a chance, we got a mortgage together on it. You know what I mean? And then our plan, we got somewhere else, but you got to make sure that, you know, if your spouse is moving in with you, that you don't have that attitude that it's my house. I can put you out, give my key back, all of that. But about Elijah Wan's house, that's his grandma's house. <laughs> that's his grandma's house. When they walked in, I was like, I'm telling you, his grandma, great grandma, great aunties, this somebody house that he got and then the kids playing outside i was like hold on wait a minute wait a minute those are solid yellow lines on that street <laughs> that's a street <laughs> that's a highway it's a highway them kids ain't can't no play kids, up there ain't no kids playing out there not no dark and white line or no line my my the street i live on don't have no line we're in a cul-de-sac it had two solid yellow lines. i said good gosh the, uh uh, ain't nobody play because you walk out your door, you right in the street. We're gonna have a problem, but I uh -huh. tell him, but you know, I tell him to sell his house, right? No, no, but and this is what you learn when you get married. There's some things, especially you're a man, and you know, Artika said a little bit about the futon. Tommy had a futon in college, he too, did. Right? I, I love that futon, dog, it was me, right? But, <laughs> but I, I had a couch, but when I moved, that futon stayed in Baltimore because <laughs> I knew. There was no room in the townhouse, right? But you brought your bed. You put your bed, bed in the other bedroom. I put my bed in the other bedroom. Yeah. So we made some made some provisions. Yeah. But again, um, when a woman steps into a building, a woman steps into a room, she always gonna make um, she's always gonna make. There's always some things she like because a man just can't do it like a woman can in certain situations or circumstances when it comes to decorating and things of that nature. And so she saw some things. That's why when you have it together, you can be like, you know what? How do you want to design this? She feels like she's a part of your home. You don't feel no type of way when she comes and say, you know what? Those coffee curtains, they ugly. That brown, mm -mm. that green right there, nope, can't do that. <laughs> that. That wood panel, no. And I appreciate the fact the brother has a house. I'm not knocking the fact that he has a house. I'm, I'm, I'm glad he has a, he has a home. Congratulations. But when you when you bring a woman into your home, just know that they're gonna change some things that you already have. Mm -hmm. And so don't feel, don't take it on your chin or your chest, even if it's your grandma's house. She has to put a woman's touch there and to make it feel like home for her. And it may be changing the color. It may be doing some things in the kitchen. We had no problem with Claire talking about, yo, Ryan, you need to fix this. You need to fix that. You need to do this. So let's let's let Katina come in and do what she need to do. And, bro, if you need to sell the house so you can enlarge that family, sell the house. You know? So, 
Are we anybody anybody anything else on uh Katina and Elijah? Go ahead. I don't have nothing on them. I just wanted to say now that we're talking about houses, I forgot to say I was so upset that I didn't get this that van life Steve didn't show us his van. That's it. That's all. I wanted to tell him. I wanted to tell y'all cannot tell me when he said he was traveling in the van, I just knew it was gonna be decked out. He was gonna have a little bed over here, a little sink. I wanted to see that. And He's going to have lights all around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the LED lights in the apartment. I was like, you know what, Steve? I'm disappointed now. Forget it. <laughs> right. right. Well, you know, we didn't see Katina's house either. That's or Jasmine's. Or Jasmine's. Right. That's true. I did yeah. want to say uh, my futon, like, you have to realize my futon was the <laughs> only thing that I had in my living room, aside from a TV. So Me too, Tom. Brought, when she brought her couch in, I was like, shoot, I made it, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, got a couch. we got options now. You know, right. so that's what it was. Y'all connected to them daggone futons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> y'all. I had a futon too, but I wasn't connected to it like that. As soon as I got the opportunity to get rid of mine, I was like, all right, <laughs> later, bye. Yeah. I'm going to tell y'all, the best and worst thing that ever happened to us was our apartment catching on fire because it forced him to get rid of some things. Like, we were only sad. able to salvage actual wood furniture. So it's like now everything that we have is things that we've acquired together because he was not letting that futon or them uh, press and plop <laughs> wood tables go. I was like, goodness, this got to get out of the house. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. He did look a little sad. He did look a little sad there. Yeah. So we, we, we mentioned Jasmina and Michael. So let's let's go there with Jasmina and Michael. Um, I just got to ask it this way. Why brought lie right about his roommates, right? Why, why did brought lie about his roommates? Uh, we could we could start with uh, August love story. Why brought lied by his roommates? Let me go first. Oh, yeah. get it out the way. I don't know why this nigga <laughs> lied, man. I'm sorry. Excuse my language, man. But I was like, you just up here lying to be lying to be lying. <laughs> just you like it's like, bro. Like, come on, man. She told you she lives with a boy. You can obviously then be like, yeah, that's cool. I live with two girls. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, we not we not having sex or anything like that. They're just you know they roommates. You know what I'm saying? And 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 keep it pushing. Like he's trying his best to mess this up the best way he can. And I don't think it's on purpose. That's crazy, right? Like I don't think he's purposely trying to mess it up, but I think he's trying to mess it up. Um. But it's it's like you you take opportunities like that that simple question we talk about things and 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 just bring the conversations up of how do you do, like it's like you tell the truth it brings it into another conversation you know what I'm saying like so me trying to get to know you we talk about us living with the opposite sex but then you can obviously what he was trying to say was or what he said he was trying to do was say that it's he never lived with a spouse or or significant or a girlfriend which okay i get that there's a difference with roommates and girlfriends you know and and significant others so i get saying that but just come out and tell the truth like that's the simplest thing to do lead it to another <laughs> conversation and then uh what was her thing him yelling at her like she just like she's he probably didn't yell at her she he probably had a tone that she didn't like and in, immediately it's yelling because i do that like ain't nobody gonna yell at me because my mama don't yell at me you know and that's my thing it's like i'm a grown man you talk to me like you got some sense because i'm gonna talk to you like i got some sense so um i think she probably heard it one way and he's like no nah, you ain't gonna do this like yeah i lied but i ain't yell at you <laughs> Kind of like I, God, Lee, man, he just really messing that up, and she not, and she's to the point where she's looking forward to him messing it up, not happily, but she's like she's expecting him to say something stupid, and I wouldn't be surprised if she's already made her decision to say no. It's, I wouldn't be surprised that it's nothing that he could possibly do to get her to say yes at this point. 
Michael is not a good name for married at first sight because when Michael was married to Mika, Michael was a liar. Michael that is married to Jasmina is a liar. Um, and I don't understand the this lie just did not make sense. Like it wasn't a good lie. It wasn't a lie that he like could have gotten away with. We went to the house and the girl walked out. Like <laughs> the only thing you could have said was that's my roommate's girlfriend. <laughs> and that would have just kept the lie going. But... That's a good lie. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I ain't. Are you gonna about. lie, do it right. <laughs> I mean, and be quick with it. Get them lies out. But to say no, I guess he didn't lie when he said I've never lived with a woman because I live with two. <laughs> he found the like the loophole in his lie. Plain semantic. <laughs> it was just like Jasmina sat at their wedding, pointed to this man at a table and said, hey, that guy right there, that's my best friend. We live together. At that moment, he should have reconciled within himself that, hey, it's okay to let her know that my two roommates are women because you have a male roommate. like, And it doesn't have to be anything between the two of you guys. I know, like, when I was in college, summer school, we had the wildest, like, sleeping arrangements because, like, people's roommates were going and studying abroad in the summer and going home. So guys and girls that weren't dating or even had any type of uh, thought of being together were like, I'm going to take the other room in your apartment. And I'm going to help you pay rent so I don't have to find somewhere else to live. So things like that happen all the time. Not so much in your 30s, but whatever. I'm going to let that go. But they are, it's just like, why tell that lie? I just, I couldn't get past that lie. And then Jasmina saying that Michael yelled at her. I do think, like Tommy said, it might not have been a yell, but it might have been a tone of voice or the wording was something that offended her. And she's like, what you're not going to do is talk to me crazy. Because when she said, now, Michael, I'm like, your voice is a little bit escalated, too. Like, let's bring that down. If we want to say that I'm up here, you can bring it down, too, because we can have a conversation. And the way that he was attempting to defend himself with Pastor Cal, because Pastor Cal started, he was like, he was like hey, hold on, hold on. I got to get this out. Hold on. <laughs> I got to finish this thought, because what she's not going to do is lie on me on that one. Now, at this point, because everybody's lying, because Jasmine lied about the dog and yeah, that was the... I was like, man, just tell them straight up, man. You don't want to stay here because <laughs> you still trying to figure out like what's going on. Everybody's lying. Nobody wants to be together. We're just here so we don't get fine. That's that's where I am with Michael and Jasmine. I I really, really had high hopes for them but there's something that's just not yeah. clicking i mean it's before he lied like he did it, it was something that wasn't clicking there and I, I can't figure it out i don't know what you like what could have been done outside of not lying to help them get back on a path to like being able to say oh we could make it to week eight Cause at this point it's like i don't see a point you don't see a point so we just mm -hmm. we just here now i'm just gonna argue every little thing that you say because you're a liar and that's on both sides mm -hmm. talisa. Talisa. <laughs> why can't i get my thing oh here we go i was like why can't i get it off of mute um so yeah I'm not going to give her any space because he lied by omission. I'm not going to give her any space. I'm not going to do it. I, I can't do it. He did lie by omission. Yes, he lied twice by omission. He had every opportunity to share it, but she's in a constant lie because she doesn't want to be there at all. So that's an entirely different type of lie than just lying about my two little roommates I got that don't like me like you don't like me. They don't like me uh, intimately like you don't like me. You're not attracted to me. And my biggest thing with them is um, neither one of them wants to relinquish like 
I'm right. You know what I mean? It's the, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. No, you wrong. You did this. You Nobody knows how to just sit back and say, I'm account. This is what I'm accountable for. Yes, you're absolutely right. I had every opportunity to tell you that I had two roommates and I missed it. Instead, you're going to go ahead and further the omission by saying you didn't have the opportunity or it didn't come up or, you know, um, I didn't have a roommate, you know what I mean? Or I didn't live with a woman or whatever. Like um, neither one of them really wants to be accountable because honestly, sitting there watching them talk to Pastor Cal, I'm all like, she's a bit of a hothead too. If she's talking about he's yelling at her, she's very, it, it comes off very assertive the way she's um, talking to him. It comes off very um, superior. Now, Michael, what we're not going to do, we're not going to do that. Like to me, that's very like, I'm above you. You're beneath me. And what you're not going to do is sit here and pretend like every, I just, you know, I'd be wanting the black couples to win. You know, I'd be wanting them to win. You know, that's my favorite thing to say. You know, I'd be wanting them to win, but this time they are not going to win at this rate. Her talking about, you know, she was going to check on Feeney. So Feeney not coming to the house. So Feeney not coming to the house. You got to get a daycare for eight weeks, like, or seven weeks or six weeks or whatever. What, what's happening? And just to, instead of saying, I need a reset because I don't know if I want to be in this relationship. We knew this. I actually think that this is kind of my favorite way to get to know somebody. Like, I get to tell you everything I feel and not feel bad because I've been dating you and courting you and I like you. I get to tell you, you ain't shit, sir. And you think you better than everybody, ma'am. Like, I get to tell you that. Like, this, I don't know. I probably, if I was younger, I probably would have went on Married at First Sight just so I could show people how it was done. Because um, the fact of the matter is, nobody is being honest with not just their partners, but with themselves. I need to be honest with me and say that this is not where I want to be. And as I'm sitting here with Pastor Cal and I'm having this conversation, about transparency and honesty and communication and just tell him that he is not your, I am not your enemy. I know you fucking lying. What is that going to do? I, I I don't understand the point of that, Pastor Cal. Some of the, some of the stuff you be giving is not the right answer. Like some of the, the direction I'd be like, just tell him to be quiet and let them just talk. And he's just the person there to stop them from fighting because he doesn't do a good job of giving like, direction or homework or things to do but that's just my own that's just my own shit that i'm sitting on you know he giving that whole like <laughs> pastor counseling that you give you can make it work everything can work like so i just i don't know but i, I just feel like um for one she she is playing a part in this failing relationship just as he is and i'm not gonna just put it on poor michael even though michael is michael number two the liar but she also has some just like Mika has some part in that relationship. She is contributing to the downfall of this relationship and they are spiraling fast. And there is no, I, I don't see a way of them coming up either, Tommy. I don't, see, I don't see them coming out of this spiral. Like I'm all like, okay, well, let's just call it quits. Let's play patty cake and sit and watch TV and order pizza and be homies. You sleep in that room, I'm gonna sleep in this one and get our little money. That's it. Cause I, it's, how do they rectify this is now my question. If they if they really want to continue and be married, what is it that they do? I don't have an answer for them. I don't have an answer. I mean, I should. I'm a wife coach. I don't have a fucking answer. I, I don't have an answer. <laughs> Chloe, do you have an answer? <laughs> <laughs> if she ain't got one, I definitely ain't got one for y'all. <laughs> no, but this is the thing, right? <clears throat> Michael said he ain't never lived with a woman, never. That's his, his exact words was he never lived with a woman, right? In the conversation where she brought up the fact that she lived with a male roommate was the perfect time to give that, to put it out there, right? But he still went with it. He said, this is new territory for me, as if he then reinstate, reinstated that new territory like he never lived with a woman. I was like, Michael's a liar. We know Michael's a liar, but it's Jasmina for me, okay? I'm going to tell you why. When Jasmina told him that she was going to go find a dog daycare for the dog, we was like, cool. But then she told us later, well, no, we wasn't like cool. We was like, girl, get that dog and come over here. What you talking about? But then she said she really just needed to go reset. So tired of everybody going home to reset. Like who in real marriages get to go home and reset? Like nobody goes somewhere to go reset. You either going to go go to the corner store or come back home. You're going to sit in the bed, look at each other stupid until somebody decide that they need something from the kitchen. You want to get someone so fool? Okay. And then y'all talk again, right? 
No one goes home to reset. That's what she told us. When she went to Michael's house, the first thing she did when she walked in that man room, who is that? You talking about that silhouette picture that clearly looks like nobody? That it has no color to it, it's all blue? That picture? Who is that? What? <laughs> Jasmina, what? <laughs> I was like, oh, she ready. See, Jasmina went in fishing. She went in with the hand rub, like, mm, let me go in. She's like, I'm looking for the kinky drawer. Remember she said, I'm looking for the, you know, the, 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 the she's looking for something to start a problem because homegirl don't want him. She goes into the living room. It's, oh, oh, so you like crystals? Whose golf clubs is those? So where your roommates at? Y'all hang out a lot? She was literally, she knew what was up. She was trying to get it out so that she could find another reason to beat him down in the back. Michael didn't make it easy. Did not make it easy because when the ghost of Christmas passed went in the bathroom, I was like, you're not gonna come say hi? <laughs> Girl, you're not gonna stop by and say, what's up? Nothing? Okay, you're just gonna go in the room? Okay, cool. <laughs> then Michael tried to, he told that he did have one that he tried to tell. Then she had to ask again later for the second one. Too much, Michael. But it's, it's, it's something that we could overlook just a little bit. Just a little bit because it's not that big of a deal. Um, I mean, it's sus. It's real sus. I ain't gonna hold you. It's real sus because now I'm just wondering why you ain't want to tell nobody. Why you ain't want to tell her? What's the relationship like? Why she sneak in the room so fast? Why she ain't stop by to get a quick wave? Why she ain't say hi off camera? Why she just go in the room like she like you didn't just come back from vacation? She ain't see you for a couple of days. Okay, never mind. I ain't even gonna go there. It's sus. Okay. Then we find out he has two. Jasmina sat down in front of Pastor Cal, and when they started talking, she tried to tell Pastor Cal that he was being, he don't, he, she doesn't like the way he talks to her when he gets angry because he's being loud and his tone and everything. But she did the same exact thing she accused him of doing. Now, Michael, we are not going to do this. Now, Michael, you are not going to. To the point, Michael was like, and I'm like, oh, so you he you could do he could he can't do it, but you could do it. Last time I checked, every time me and my husband get in some type of argument, a real argument of some sort, we get a little loud, we get a little tall. That's normal, okay? So okay, he said, I admit, I had a tone. If you want to say that, I had a tone. If you want to say I was this, but when you go out to try to say that this man is aggressive and got the nerve to say that he said himself that he's aggressive, now I have a problem with you because he never said that, and that's why Michael had to get it out so bad because he was like, oh whoa whoa whoa, aggressive? Not the worst, sis. You're not about to put that on me. You're not about to put that on me. And I'm just saying here, like everything she said was a problem for her. She said and did to him. She was condescending. She had the tone. She even got a little loud. She got a little loud. And I was like, mm, Jasmina, you sure you wasn't in on that conversation? You sure you wasn't arguing back? Because it's giving you was arguing back, sis. Don't play with me. Okay. <laughs> you know, and one thing we saw from Michael, this is one thing. Even when he disagreed with her leaving, he did it respectfully. He like, I don't think we could be together. I don't think. So to me, what we as viewers saw, if he was able to do that respectfully, how many other conversations that they had that he'd done respectfully? Mm -hmm. you know, that she probably blew out of proportion because he would raise his voice a little bit. To me, even then he raised his voice like, yo, I think we should be this. I think we should be together. I think we should. I read through the crap. So when she said, I want to go home. For your dog, your dog, been, you already, where's your dog been at for the last 10 days that y'all been gone? Right? <laughs> Where, where the dog been at? Keep the dog where it's at right now. <laughs> Who was hanging on to the dog? So you know what? We're gonna stay right there, right? Or if you love that dog so much, and hey, Michael, can we can, can the dog come with us? Can the dog sleep with us? Dog. Let's have another conversation. So he already he knew what time it was when she decided to leave. So he was like, okay, cool. And let it let it let it fly. Um, with the, the roommate situation, you know, bro should have been like, you know what, I got two female female roommates, even if even if I'm, I agree with you, Chloe, even in one of those situations where, you know what, it's been a couple late nights, I've been feeling some type of way, you was feeling some type of way. And we fell we, up in. And we fell up in each other. You know what I'm saying? We <laughs> fell in. Let, let it be what it is. Even if it's a situation ship, let it be like that. But for him to say, I've never lived with a woman where your roommates are women, nah, dog. And first of all, but see, then again, is he that dumb? Because if I knew I was living with two women, and I ain't want my girl to know I was living with two women. 
You, I'd be like Christina from New Orleans. You can't come to my apartment right now. I don't even live in my apartment, <laughs> right? <laughs> van life, the van life tour. <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like, my sister, I would call my sister like, "Yo, um, can you get my stuff out of my apartment and bring to your house and act like I live in one of your rooms, right?" So let's let's be honest. So do you know? So there are some things that's shaky about his story, and I think he was so he. Could, I give him after part on the after party. He was like, you know what? I, I didn't know what she was saying. And I kind of give him that because he was so tired of her talking and yelling at him that he'd have probably block, he'd have probably blocked that junk out. I know y'all shaking your head now. Nah. He lied. <laughs> she was she, she brought it up in the context of talking about having a male roommate. It wasn't yeah. like it was like a weird, like just random yeah. question. Like she he, he brought was, it up in that context. And he was yeah. like, oh, no, that's new territory to me. He's scared. He was scared. He yeah. was scared to admit because there's something going on with him and her other roommates. I'm sorry. If, and to me, to me, I think one of his roommates they did something, or he don't want his roommate to say something to her, or say something of that nature. He, him, and one of his roommates had some type of relationship. I'm not gonna try to insinuate they had some type of thing that was going on. And, and I don't know any as a guy perspective. Tommy, maybe you can help me out. We ain't gonna lie. We ain't gonna let her not come to our apartment if there was nothing. Oh, come on in. If there was nothing, we gonna say, yo, this is this is so and so. This is so and so. When you try, when you don't want no one to know, you lie. That's what guys do. I'm sorry. I, 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 I might be breaking a man code. Y'all just, you know, <laughs> no, I mean, we, we some, lie. some females do it too. Some females do it too. And then again, you know, like <laughs> we said, let's not be mincing words. When I say female, I mean female. I didn't say, have you ever lived with a girlfriend? Have you ever lived with a fiance? Have you ever been married before? When I said female, I meant female. Though, so don't sit there and try to insinuate, oh, I thought you had meant that it was. Yeah, I thought, no, I said, have you lived with a female? That can include your sister, your auntie, your cousin, your grandma. That's she a female, ain't she? Maybe so he should have definitely had to include his sisters because his sisters took care of him after his mom died. Like that's, what, I'm saying. Right. that's what I'm saying. So no, you stop missing no, words and no, call no, it what it is. No, you live with a female. I'm thinking he probably <laughs> did, he probably didn't say it because the fact of the matter is I live with two. <laughs> And he was like, God dog, if I tell her one, that's one thing. If I tell her two, oh Lord, what's getting ready to happen now? I agree with Chloe. She did. Ow. I said the same thing. When she walked in there, what's this? What's that? Who's this? Where's that? Why is this like that? Who's that? Look at this stuff over here in the corner. She was like, mm -hmm, I'm going to find something. I'm going to find something. And then when whoever that was came out the bathroom, went in the room, she was like, there it is. There it is right there. I got it. Just, just hearing the comment because I never thought about any of those things. I was just, I couldn't, I couldn't understand why he lied about. It. Even if, if I had hit one of them chicks, and and you know and stuff like that, if that happened, I would probably still be like, yeah, I live with two females, and act as if nothing has ever happened. Right, that right. Is, that's the player in me. So, the thing that, like, I feel like, uh, was Jasmina knew he was lying mm. like somebody because she it's did. so weird that she the girl did. just came out at that time like she didn't know that people were in her house recording because that's what that's when watching it that's what it looked like it looked like oh she was coming out because they were recording didn't want to be on tv or didn't sign the paper or whatever it was but as a roommate she knew what was going on Mm -hmm. You know, you know when somebody's in your home. If you're gonna have a production crew come to my house, you're at least gonna shoot me a text message and be like, "By the way, they're gonna be there at 11. I don't know how long we're gonna be shooting. Um, maybe you don't need to be here. Yeah. Something I don't know. But Michael just has. If he's gonna tell lies, he's gotta tell better lies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because that just wasn't the lie. To tell. Right, like you wasting lives, man. That's the problem. That was a you waste of life. That stuff up. Use it for a good account of the right occasion. <laughs> like, man, like you, like the thing is, it's like you got to look at it like this. <laughs> if you lie to your wife, and at this point they're married, like you, if you lie to your wife, she can't help you because you're not being truthful to her. If you hit one of these chicks, tell her it's okay. Right, you know, know, it's, it's, it's okay. it's you know what's okay, Tommy? It's before her. It's not that's like that was deep. It's okay because it's before her. 
Right. Yeah. That was our whole sentiment with uh Kristen Page. Like Page was like, Well, I mean, he didn't cheat on me to get this baby, so I mean I'm here. Right, right, right. He had a point. So it's it's, it's like uh, I, it's just I don't know, man. That was just stupid. Yeah. Like, um, so th- the other thing that I wanted to touch on too is okay, so um them he, him being aggressive and using a tone and yelling at her. Um so again, it's so many, it was so many things on this episode that I was like, like, this is like you in my house. <laughs> you in my house. Because I don't, I don't have two rooms no, living in, I don't have two girls living in the house, y'all. <laughs> and she's not in the house, there ain't no extra no, women in here. <laughs> no, no, because I said this. Sometimes when you're used to being talked to a certain way, just because somebody raises their voice, you want to call it yelling. And it's not yelling. You're just not used to somebody talking to you like that. You know what I'm saying? So I t- I tell my husband that, you know, he don't yell at me or nothing. It's just, again, he's used to talking to male athletes. He's used to talking to his clients. And so it's it's real direct. And sometimes, you know, because you got to get these little jokers from climbing the wall and stuff. You'll be like, hey, get down. You know what I'm saying? And he ain't yelling. It's just got to put some bass in his voice. You know what I'm saying? So I, that's all I kept thinking. I was like, she's just, I, I doubt he's yelling at her. It's just the tone that she's not used to. And then on the flip side too, I was, she, she Gail King him, Robert, right? She said, Michael, Michael, like she got to do them little toddlers. Get off, get off the, don't climb on the bookcase. Get down, get down. She did the same thing to him. She, she his, did she the exact his, same thing to him. If she knew his middle name, she would have called his whole name. She sure would have. She sure would have. And I was like, Missy, and I'm with him. I think in that moment, it went through, you know, domestic stuff went through his mind. You know, you're not going to portray me as an aggressor. You're not going to have these people try. Because what you try to almost hit at is that if I hadn't stopped him, he would have hit me. If it was that close, I'm telling you. So he was like, no, 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 no. Because they're going to talk about us anyway because we're on a TV show. But what you're not going to have them doing is got them thinking I'm beating your tail when the camera's out of sight. Because you don't do none of this on camera, Mm -hmm. Mike. Ain't that what she said? Oh, you camera's not around when he do this. And And she said, she said, you absolutely right. She said he's not at a 10 when he gets like this. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I wasn't mad at him at all. And the one thing, I mean, it was kind of corny the way uh, Pastor Cal said it, but like me and my husband have done that too. He don't say, you know, I'm not an enemy. I'm, I'm going to tell you a business. I'm going to tell you about the man of God. I have literally had my husband in the middle of a disagreement. He said, uh-uh, not today, devil. Mm-mm. He said not, and not calling me the devil, but recognizing that this is a this is a, a point of contention where it would try to bring division in between us. And I think that's what Pastor Cal was trying to say. You I know, see it, but... Uh, I agree with how not today, devil, because we say yeah. uh-uh, not today, Satan. We do it all yeah. the time. But yeah. that whole I am not your enemy. I don't <laughs> think that's going to work for them. That's just not the yeah, right word for them. That's but what I'm saying. Not, I understand it. Yes, I agree. Yeah. With you. He, he, he might have to rebuke the devil. I'm like, the devil, you, you cannot come in and interrupt my marriage. I don't know what your plan or your scheme is, but I. Uh, I rebuke, you know what I'm saying? Do you? <laughs> but you know, I agree. Uh, but Talisa, I agree with you because you know what? I think she has daddy issues. She has oh, male, male yeah. daddy issues. Oh, yeah. So when she, we know she got daddy issues because her daddy left her and went to Jamaica. Right. So she's been, so she doesn't understand. It goes back to that tone. We have not been used to talk, to, we have not been talked to by a male. You mm-hmm. see this a lot. It of young, ain't nothing but the base. It's and you, nothing and but the base. You see this a lot of young men today, too, right? When young men are talked to by a real man, they try to buck up because they're not used to the fact that a man is talking to them and haven't had that experience. And sometimes when women do that, too, if you have not been talked to by a man, not that he's yelling or fussing, that he just got a little bit bass in his voice, then they revert back to that little kid. And then she treated him like he was a little kid. That Michael was like, hey, you're a toddler. And I know Pastor Cal, and because she did this, and I, and I say this, she did this because Pastor Cal was there. She felt safe with Pastor Cal in the room. I don't think she does this when it's just them two. 
Well, no, her stepdaddy said she was bossy and don't let her boss you around. So I think that's probably Michael's thing too. Like, uh, he he keep hearing the stepdaddy in his ear. So somebody said in the chat she's spoiled. I believe it. She's spoiled. Yeah. So. Yeah. So let's move on to mock the shock. Mock the shock. Poor thing. And Lindsay being his mama. Poor thing. We're gonna start with you, Talisa. Your thoughts on Mark the Shark and and Lindsay being was Liz Lindsay too overbearing for Mark the Shark? Yes. If that's the if that's the question and that's all I gotta answer, answer the whole answer is yes, wholeheartedly everything about it. But one thing that I picked up um, on is that she is uber critical of him, super critical, and it just made me look when they were brushing their teeth and she said. He brushes teeth with his whole head. I was thinking to myself, sis, pull up. Like, you are going to critique this man to death. His clothes, his hygiene, the way he walks, the way he dresses, the way he talks. You are going to push him away. And we can see that you want to be married and in this relationship. But you are going to push him all the way away. And I, I'm, I'm, I feel so bad for Mark because the only time he felt safe to open up his mouth and to express himself was when Pastor Cal was there. For him to say, I'm afraid to talk, to me says that she is a monster off the camera. So we've seen a little glimpse, right? We've seen a little bit of her spark at the honeymoon, but I can Im only can imagine the things that she says to him off camera. I feel like she degrades him and berates him off of camera we don't see it all you know she had the nerve to say he's you know uh has this duality and he's one way on camera and it's a different way on um when the camera's off he's detached when the camera's off he's detached because you're in his skin and not just doing everything you know wanting to do everything and tell him what to do but you're on top of him being very I could say the word because she a white lady, aggressive, okay? Um, being very, very just mean and just, I could just tell like, it's like his spirit is down. And yes, he does have a lot of stuff going on with the bed bugs and the roommate and the landlord, all of that nasty stuff that's happening. I didn't start itching. Um, just, that's a lot to deal with on top of your overbearing wife who wants you to tell her every single thing about what's going on so that she can tell you how to move. I, um, I, I was proud of him for him saying that I need you to slow down. I tried to tell you that I wanted you to slow down, but the reaction wasn't what I was hoping for. I, I told you, yeah, no, sex was great the first time. And then it felt like something was off the second and third time. That's something that was off was the fact that he's like he said saw you on the plane and how you acted with Elijah Wan and that behavior so now I don't want to be intimate with this aggressive woman who is this who is this nasty mean woman who I'm gonna have to defend and wait a minute you bucking at this black man and I'm gonna have to defend you I'm gonna get my ass beat you finna have me get my ass beat like all of that just changed the trajectory of me being wanting to be intimate with you on top of it's already moving faster than I would have liked it to, to move, right? He probably would have preferred to wait till he got back home, got to know her, laughed, been romantic, got home and gave it to her, you know, but that's not how it works. Um, and then her and her like, um, <laughs> her breakdowns that she has, like when she starts crying, I'm all like, what I recognize is that she's sensitive. Um, and so, it's either, and I hate to say it with a lot of people that are emotional, that don't manage their emotions well, you're either really high and you're angry or you're crying because you're hurt. There is no good balance in between. Chloe, baby, I understand because I have overcome it. Sometimes it shows up and I'll be like, oh, wait a minute. That's not what we're doing. So um, I, I, I recognize it and really need her to manage her emotions and find an even balance. But then one thing that got me too was the fact that you know, we're going to move all your stuff into my house. <laughs> Girl, your house is a box. Like, you guys aren't going to be able to fit in there together. You with all your plants and the five cats. You know, I love plants. This is sunshine right here behind us. I got a whole bunch of them over there with names too. But 
Y'all ain't gonna be able to fit in that little box. He's a big man. Like, you know, buff, built. He's a big man. You guys are not gonna fit in there with his physical energy and your mental energy. It's gonna be too much. Nowhere is nowhere for either of you to go to decompress. It's not enough space in there for you. And I just really liked that. The one thing I did like that Pastor Cal said was that um, you're going to have to pull up. You're going to have to figure out how to pretty much in, in, in words, how to let him ask for your support. Let him ask you to help. That was the one thing that I appreciated him saying. And then him, him reminding Mark, she needs to be affirmed. So she needs a Thank you for giving me this water. And thank you for helping me um, clean out my home, even though you was just throwing shit in the bag and not in a good way. Like you were just breaking shit and telling me what I wanted and what I didn't need. And does this bring you joy? I mean, that is a great way to figure out how to get rid of stuff. But yo, this is not the time because this is a stressful environment. Be gentle with me right now. Like I need you to understand that my whole life just blew up while I was on vacation when I married to you, got married to you. You just want me to throw my shit in a bag and get rid of all. Do you need these dressers? You don't need this, do you? I just told you to be careful and you broke something. I just, she's so much. I told y'all I like her. Innately, she has a good spirit. Inside, she has a good spirit, but she's too much and does not, doesn't do well with listening, doesn't do well with understanding what someone is saying. Especially when he, I can't remember what it was, but she said, no, I don't, I'm not understanding. I don't get it. It was the, um, about the intimacy and, oh, now it's all or nothing and holding the hand. She was like, no, I don't understand what he's telling me. Like she does not have a good uh, grasp of understanding, of listening. She doesn't know how to sit back and relax. She, um, she's, she's very much so controlling. Um, and he is going to have to assert himself in this relationship. He's going to have to not be afraid of Lindsay and her big mouth and her mean words and say, yo, shut up. Like she may, that might be the language that he has to use for her to understand. I just don't, I don't, I'm not under, I, I don't understand why he's afraid, but maybe because all the women in his life have been very much so, um, in control, very much so overbearing, very much so do what I say. You know, you don't have a say, you know what I mean? Like very much so all of that. And so um, I know that that was a lot and a little bit of a synopsis, but the the crux of it is he don't, he don't think he really want to be there no more because you heard him say, and I don't know, Artika always calls it something, but I always call it a confessional. She calls it something else. And I like the word she uses. What's the diary that? cam. Yeah, the diary cam. <laughs> In the diary cam, um, he said, y'all don't see her when the cameras are gone. You don't see how she behaves when the cameras are gone. And for me, this is a big red flag for him. That's another thing. When she was like, you're giving me red flags right now with your duality. You know, you're not doing, you're not being the same. I don't know who you are. And he says to her, you've been giving me red flags, but it's new. You know, but it's new. So I'm giving it a chance. My thing is, what are red flags? There are boundaries, there are expectations that are not being met. There are triggers that are happening. And nine times out of 10, when you see them this early on, it's something that tells you to stop. It's not even like a flag on the play. It's not even a, a yellow flag. It's not an orange flag. Maybe it is red and you might need to just cut your losses. I hate to say it. I like Mark the Shark. Mark the Shark wants to be married, but he may have to just say, I say and move on his go, you know, go on about his way. You know what I'm saying? I, I I don't know. I'm gonna just get off my soapbox because I like Lindsay, but I don't. It's like one of those. It's like one of those. I like you. Like, oh my God, you could really be this great person. But in the next breath, just watching her and her energy tells me that she berates him, belittles him. She's mean. She just says, just I I just was like, oh my spirit, my little empath self was like, oh poor Mark. I even wanted to cry, but I think it's because it's you know lady time but i'm just saying i just was feeling away i was just feeling away i'm gonna get off my box now chloe your thoughts on mark the shot i mean so here's the thing right mark i told y'all last week when we was up here talking that he needs to talk 
He needs to stop enabling her and he needs to tell her what it is and how he's feeling because he just says whatever he needs to say to get her to be quiet. Remember we talked about that with the whole prayer and everything? He said it. He can't express anything to her, but it's his fault too because he's shutting down. And instead of having those conversations with her, he's just trying to get by, okay? One thing I, the one thing I didn't like about Mark was complaining about that girl's house. I don't care. You ain't got nowhere to live, bro. Point blank in the period. You just let, you left the attic apartment. We saw that the apartment was this big. Your apartment was this big. Don't come to her apartment and talk about how big it is. Like you ain't come from the attic right there. Okay, let's stop. And it was just her little space. You better be lucky she let you come there because where was you going? I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it, okay? So I was like, that's ungrateful because if anyone takes me into this space after everything that she did, she done went and fought the bed bugs with you, grabbed your stuff, had that stuff in a car, in her apartment. No, and she already been through this, this traumatic experience herself once before. You don't have the right to come talk about how small her stove is, how small her um, living room is. She ain't got no room underneath the bed. Boy, just be happy you got somewhere to go if y'all still together in these eight weeks. That's the one thing. But I do think that she is very, very selfish. Um, she's saying that he's hot, he's cold. He's hot, he's cold. If you really love and care for someone, you have to let them process things the way that they process. He's trying to literally pick up pieces of his life, process everything that just happened. This man went to get married, came back with no place to go, half of his stuff, his grandmother's sick, and everything just hit him. Bang. And then you got a crazy wife. <laughs> She's just added to the stress. And instead of her being his peace, she then becomes part of the problem. She's just another thing to add to his plate of confusion. Because now she won't be like, I got you, Mark. Take your time. This is the part. She, she, she's mental. On that couch. Mark said he went until his little moment because he was trying to explain why he couldn't say that he loved that, um, why he wanted to take it slow, right? She goes, it's okay. You want me to get you some water? It's okay. You want me to get you some water? Then turns around and go, I don't even know what he's talking about. It's just running on sentences. I said, what in the heck is going on in this lady's mind? It was like, wait, I'm confused. Lindsay, what, what are you be drinking? Leave the wine. The first thing she did with Pastor Cal came, pull that big old glass of wine and said, no, leave the freaking wine because, girl, you're drunk. That's what's happening. You're drunk. You're woozy. You can't figure out where you're going, okay? You want to hear what he's saying, but you can't. You want to be there for him, but you can't because your mental space is not even there. She's going in and out. Even when talking to Pastor Cal, she was like, <laughs> be careful what you ask for. <laughs> you're right. We just everything we need. <laughs> I'm like, you was just sitting there cursing him out five seconds ago, literally five seconds ago. I'm confused. And it's just like, has some sympathy for this man. Be his peace. And I know people would say they only have eight weeks to get to know each other. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that she literally has to jump inside his skin. This is the perfect time to show someone that you can be there for them and not push yourself on them. Because what she's doing is becoming another problem now that he's trying to sort out. Instead of having her to sort out them problems with, he's trying to figure out how he's going to take care of this problem. The same way I'm going to take care of this problem, this problem, and that problem. Because she's adding to problems now. And that's unfair. It's so unfair because she is nurturing. She's caring. She just doesn't know how to use it the right way. That's the problem that I'm fighting with with Lindsay because, like Lisa said, her heart is good. Her heart is great. But sometimes her actions just don't show. And it's like, girl, I need you to figure out how to get your heart to show through your actions. Because what you're doing is not going to be healthy for you or him in the future. Mm -hmm. And that's it. But she crazy. <laughs> <laughs> August, I I'm going to start out by saying uh, somebody, I can't remember who it was, in Lindsay's life, gave Mark a nobody. He needs to exercise it. When she came over to the house and was like, I'm going to help you start packing up stuff, and she started Marie Kondo in his house, no, get out. <laughs> like, you're breaking things. These are mine. It doesn't matter if it sparks me joy. This is the china from my parents. This is the only thing that I have left of my two parents. Let me have this. I think that like you guys said, 
she's um, very nurturing. She means well, but she's not trying to align with his feelings and how things are going for him. She's not, as he said, he, she's not allowing him to process things. She's just like, you got bed bugs? All right, we got to do this, we got to do this, we got to do this, we got to do this. And he's like, wait, I have bed bugs. <laughs> Like, let me let me settle in the fact that I have bed bugs and then let's start working on devising a plan. It's just like you're taking this from zero to 100 and you're not listening to anything that I'm saying. I do think that Mark is going to have to um, find better ways to say things to Lindsay so that she can understand it. He's not going to always have a pastor cow to be like, OK, so. Tell me what you're going to say and then let me figure out a way to say it to Lindsay so she can hear it because she she can't hear it because she has to be right about the situation. And that's where her problem lies is that she's mother, she's all knowing and she has to be right. And Mark is looking at it like, look, I've gotten this far in life without having you as my mama. I can figure it out give me a minute to let me figure it out and like then I'll, I'll let allow me to ask you to help me figure it out because the problem is is that you just want to help me figure it out and i'm not allowing you to let me help you do it you just taking over um i think that mark is going to use this time of this eight weeks to go find him somewhere else to live um if it works out with Lindsay, cool. Maybe me and Lindsay will move into this new place together and she can let her tiny place go too. Because she was saying you can move in. And like I Tommy and I watched the episode separately. And when we talked about it, I was like, Where? You got all this stuff. Your storage is under your bed. You said it is full. It's stuff everywhere. And I'm not saying it was like messy or anything, because it wasn't messy. It's just there's no space for him in that house. Like, no. She threw all it all out anyway. She threw all his stuff out anyway. It don't matter. He just need to bring him. <laughs> Literally, I don't even think his watch bands can fit in that house. Like, it's just, it's not enough room. And you're like, okay, get rid of your stuff. Get rid of your stuff. Let's go through your house and see what causes you joy. Like, what sparks joy for you? And let's throw away some things and then maybe we can have that conversation. I just think that Lindsay's taking it too far. He needs to use his no button and figure out how to articulate to her what needs to be said. You're done. Mm -hmm. All right, so I ain't gonna be long on this one because I fell asleep when they by the time they started talking to Pat. <laughs> so only thing I really have to say is Lindsay is a lot. Uh Mark needs to he needs to curse her out one good time. That's so rude. And it's just one time he needs to like so she can understand, not not even necessarily cuss her, you know what I'm saying? But talk really stern with her and say, Hey, this is the way it's gonna go. This is what I need. Because there there's a I can let you, you know, I hate to say it this way, but I can let the leash off so far, right? I can let you go so far, but this is your boundary. You know what I'm saying? And in a high stress situation, I need you to stay within your boundary because I have to figure out this next part. You know, if it was your life and you were going through that situation, I would ask you on the back end, how can I help? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a sense of how can I help? Not I'm going to help you. This is what you need to do, you know, type deal. But uh, Lindsay, Lindsay is a lot and Mark is not enough. And they balance the and the balance is there, but Mark has, like I said about Katina, Mark has to step up and say something. And it 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 can't be a I'm standing up for myself. He needs to overreact on the situation that he's stepping up to. Because the thing is, she's gonna when he when he brought up the romantic dinner thing mm -hmm. and he was like he wants to slow down, <clears throat> if he was more stern stern is not the word that i'm looking for that's the only word that's coming up but use your own adjective but maybe assertive more, uh, yeah, that's it that's it if he was more assertive about what he was trying to say she would have received it a little bit better and i believe she would have been able to uh move forward 
with their conversation and not having to go back and, and reset. If he was more assertive in this situation, his stuff would have never been broken. He would have never gotten frustrated and she never would have. I don't like that. Let me go off by myself. No, let's talk about it. Let's figure out what's going on. And if we need to table it, we'll table it. But that's that situation. They didn't need to table it. And by the time that's when they were in the apartment. And by that time I was out. So that's it. I think that <laughs> I expected so much more from Mark the shark and he's turned into Mark the beta fish with Lindsay. Like he's like shrunk completely into this small space and he can't get anything out because he fears of how she's going to react to it. And that's not a way to be in any relationship, not just speaking romantically, but just any relationship. You never want to feel like you have to shrink yourself because this other person is filling up so much space. And I think that Lindsay is just taking up too much room in this relationship with all of her support. And he's a grown man. He's done it this long by himself. Right. And he's not even like, I depended on my mama for this because he couldn't. He's literally been an adult male doing this for himself. So it's like, okay, we need to figure this out. Like, why do you need to fill up so much space and allow him to like fill up some space mm -hmm. as well? Because he's supposed to be a shark. Like, we're not trying to have a goldfish in the house. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, it, it doesn't go together. Yeah. That makes good sense, though, when you talk about, when all of you talked about how he's been doing this on his own for himself, but not only for himself, when you think about his mother, he's been helping his mother for forever. So mm -hmm. not only have I been planning for me, I've been planning for them, too. I'm going to go on and go because I know it's Jack and Glenn's time. <laughs> oh, no, it, 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 it's not much you find real quick. But, um, you know, I think Mark has mama issues. We talk about Jasmine having daddy issues. Mark has mommy issues. Because he always wants somebody to take care of him. Or somebody's always been there to take care of him. If you look at his mama's been sick and she wouldn't take care of him. Now the landlord was his mama figure taking care of him. And Lindsay has just tried to fulfill the role that Mark has established and that he wants. So he reverts back to that. I'm going to use the word my um, um a guppy, right? <laughs> I got kids. I got little kids, right? <laughs> the, 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 the little, show the little guppies. He goes back to a guppy. You know, he goes back to that little kid where. I don't want to hurt the women in my life because the women in my life have means, meant so much to me or mean so much to me. So I don't want to be aggressive as Tommy suggested he should be because he doesn't want to hurt the woman in his life, which is Lindsay. Because I think he really does care about Lindsay. He really loves Lindsay. He doesn't want to hurt her by raising a voice. He wants to be a good husband, whatever the case may be. It doesn't mean you're not a good husband because you're a little stern or you're assertive, the word we use, assertive. It just means that you want to get your point across. Um, Mark also, I think Lindsay just wants to have sex with Mark. Because Mark said on after party that Lindsay lied about the times they had sex and that she's very a sexaholic, you know, that she wants sex and all this. I think Lindsay wants to take care of Mark so Mark can take care of her. And it's just a whole bunch of stuff going on in that relationship. Um, the one thing I wanted to say was <clears throat> that Mark definitely needs to speak up about is um, let me process the way I process. She talked about him being hot and cold and up and down. What well, dog? Like Artika said, I got bed bugs in my house. <laughs> Let me think about that for a minute. She told us in her diary cam, her vignette, off the his grandma went to 70 pounds. Let me sit here. I'll be up and down too. She his grandma weighed less than my youngest child. That's a lot. These are probably, you know, this is probably the woman, if maybe his mama got sick before his grandmama did. Maybe his grandma was the one that to let him take this a lot. This is a lot. And, and she's the one telling his business at that. He's not even telling nobody nothing. It's her. Right. So just, just, just give, just give me a minute. Let me, I would be up and down hot and cold too. Cause it's like my grandma, my mama. My landlord, who is like a mama, like everybody's, everything's going crazy right now. And I don't know which way is up. And you trying to give me that. She's trying to give him that hurry up and get over it. It's like a hurry up and let's, let's, it's a her. No, no, like I, I got to sit right here for a minute. And then I'm not used to 
like Mark said, I ain't used to the people that like you, you way up here. I'm not, I don't do that. I don't, I use the example on our uh, review. I ain't the type to go into the restaurant and blow the whole spot up because I don't have no utensils. That's what you do. I, I'm not used to that. Um, she called him, remember on the other episode, she said I'm gonna have to class him up. Nah, I, I, is he looking like he got more class than you? He looking like he got more class than you. And so she feel like she got to class him up. She got to do, no, you trying to make him into what you want him to be. And Mark is like, I just don't operate like that. And so I'm with somebody that I, she going to have to get used to how he operates, maybe if they stay together. And she going to have to understand that everybody doesn't operate process, uh, have no filter like me. And uh, I felt I felt like Talisa, I felt so bad for him because I was like that when he when he came in the apartment and they were in the kitchen and they was just looking like you could see the weight on him. It is heavy for him. And she's like, just ready. Let me fix it up for you. Let me do what you going to do about my grandma only weighing 70 pounds. She don't like insure. She don't want no two feet. What you going to do? What you going to do? You can't fix that. What you going to do to you? You can't fix that. So let me be in control. That's it right there. Let me be in control of the things I can control. And the thing I can control is pick, packing my house up because all of this other stuff is out of my control. Let me do that. Let me do that. Because you, like he said, I feel like I'm out of my skin because you've taken it from me. Let me be in control what I can be in control of. And the other thing is I'm in control of me. I'm in control of my emotions. And right now I don't feel good. But from in, from her perspective, she is a nurse. Yeah. A hospice nurse. And so she's, and what she came into, knowing people getting ready to die, okay, we got to move to the next patient. And she treated, she treated Mark like that. But a real, let me tell you something, a real hospice nurse, does, I, and I'm not saying she's not a real hospice nurse understands you deal with all kinds of patients and all kinds of family members. Yep. And so, you know, family members and patients run the whole gamut. So you got to be able to deal with the family members that are like, and you got to deal with the family members that are like, I'm stuck. I don't know what to like my, my, my family member is dying. I don't know. I'm in all kinds of stages of grief right now as a hospice nurse. She should know you got to address everybody at the level that they are. Now, and I can appreciate she does. It takes a lot to be a hospice nurse because you have to be caring. And I get that. But you can't be pushy. You can't be pushy because everybody's not ready for that. Your, your family only got six months. And some people going to be like, <laughs> some people be like, oh, six months. But that's going to go fast. Other family members going to be like, you sure it's just six months? I feel like can it be not, you know, they not ready for it. And even when they start breathing funny, even in the room in the right room. then, they still in denial. She knows that. Listen, listen. I, and, and I'm, as you speak about that, I think about the hospice nurse for my, my husband. Now, when they said to me, well, you know, he ain't got that much time, less than a month. And we had him come home and the hospice nurse in the house. My mind was, okay. Let me make this comfortable. This is going to go quickly. Like I adjust it quickly. But then again, mm -hmm. I had fasted and God had already told me that he was bringing him home. He was going to heal him on the other side. So I had already got in my mind that um, it was going to go fast. Um, however, his mother did not. His brother did not. Right. So and watching my hospice nurse, I had a couple of them. And I'm trying to hold, keep myself together. I'm trying to hold it together, y'all. Um, they were men um, that I had. I had two men. And when I tell you that they were the kindest, loving, caring, supportive people and handled us according to our needs, mm -hmm. and though they knew that I was operating in, this is just what has to happen. This mm -hmm. is the way things have to go. Where everyone else was... I'm not ready. I can't. I wasn't really ready. I don't give a damn what we may have gone through. I wasn't ready. So I had, but I had to take control as his wife and understand what, and those people were the most caring people I have ever met in my life. 
And so knowing that Lindsay is a hospice nurse, there has to be something in her that triggers how to be caring, not just at her job, because that is a requirement. You have to tell the people so their breath is slowing down. You know what I mean? They're talking in gibberish. You, they have to be able to explain this to you in a way that you understand it. And so she has to be able to apply that same caring that she does at work at her home life. Oh, I did good. I did good. They back there in the-, in the You did. You, you did. did. You did. You did. You did. You did. You did. You did. But if you, if you didn't do good, it was okay. Yeah, yeah I, was, I, was, I was trying to keep it together because otherwise y'all might have got the ugly cry. Because every time I get to this part of the store, this part of my story, tell anybody, and it's been a while now. Well, you know, you it's a wound. You know, it could probably open up any minute. It's a it's a scar there. It might open. Um, I normally <laughs> so like um yeah. <laughs> so thank y'all. Well, yes, you're ma'am. You're welcome. All right, the, the coup de gras, the final, the finale. And I'm going to start with Jackie because she has to leave. Oh. She has to go somewhere. Um, but I can't. Uh, I don't, Alyssa and Chris, oh. before you go get dressed. I can't. It's so much. It's so much. You can't be late. I'm just, okay. Now I can't be late. Um, huh. I'm so glad that Chris got an even bigger pair <laughs> on this episode. And he was like, this is my decision day. Enough with the foolishness. Mm-mm. No, thank you. No, thank you. I don't want it. <laughs> he said, I don't want it. I don't. And she was already, I think, she sat there. She talked to a lawyer. She talked to somebody and was like, you know, if you break this contract, what's going to happen, right? And so she's like, I'm going to try. I'm going to try this time. I'm going to do it. And he was like, too little, too late. Mm-mm. No, thank you. No, thank you. And the crocodile tears, because <laughs> I'm a good person. I'm not a bad person. I don't have, you know what them tears was? Dang, he got me first. <laughs> That's all it was. It was, dang, he got me first. I was getting ready to milk this some more, and he got me. He got me, doggone it. And um, hit the conversation with her mom, I laughed. Her mama backpedaled like a mug, didn't she? Didn't she? She was like, uh, she did say, well, I thought he was nice and he was kind, but whatever she said to Alyssa on the phone on the honeymoon, she did not give that to her in that space. She should have read her right there, too. She should have read her. She really should have, but uh, I, I'm going to let y'all have that. I was just like, I clapped my hands for Chris. I was like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shut it all the way down. Shut it all the way down. And, and I laughed at this. She left her key on the island he was like key and ring boom mic drop <laughs> boom i don't where your ring at sis put your ring up there too <laughs> put your ring up there too you ain't gonna need that you're not gonna need that go ahead and leave it go mm -hmm. ahead and leave it y'all real quick on chris i think chris was like you know what i got 50 grand in the bank if y'all want it <laughs> i'll give it to you because i'm about to break this contract i got my 50 grand in the bank so if you want it you can take it you can have it but I ain't staying here no more because we can't do this. We can't do this. So it is what it is. So let's go. I'm going to move on with um, Chloe. Go ahead. We'll let you start this one. I do want to know. See ya. Have fun wherever you're going. Um, I do want to know. Does this mean that Alyssa is going for real, for real? Uh, does this mean that we're going to have to see her like in a tape in here, a tape in here, a tape in here? You know, you know how they try to do things. I just want to know if that's what that means, because I hope not. But okay, um, but I am so so happy for um Chris because Chris said y'all not about to make me sit here and look a fool. You not about to let this girl sit here and call me all types of names. When he said that she used words like Rob, Jip, this, that, and the other, I was like, add in. She said she hated you too, Chris. Add that in there. Make sure they know. Okay. Um, and he can't, and he literally can say that he went in in all stages. He went in at 100. He tried. He was willing to have conversations. The fact that this girl never gave him her number. The fact that she couldn't even say on that beach that she was willing to put in 1% was all that he needed to know. Like, there's no there's no way he could have set up there and kept trying and trying. So we can sit here and keep calling him stupid and stupid. <laughs> like, no. I'm so happy that he did that. But Alyssa, Alyssa 
is bat s h i t crazy. This girl sat up there and said that she was allergic to dogs when she rescued dogs, and she has a dog. And I said, "What is wrong with these people? <laughs> like, wait, Alyssa, say what now? <laughs> you how? okay? You know what? I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know." She got mad at him because he posted defund the police on his um, Facebook page. By the way, go ahead, Chris, for the people. Okay, go ahead, Chris, be for the people. Now, Chris trying to tell her, like, listen, if she would even had a conversation with me, she would have understood the whole, like, my whole and general, gen you know, his whole general thinking towards it, right? Um, his best friend is a police officer, the one that he literally was sitting there talking to as his, you know, right then. If he can talk to him and still be friends with him, and both of them probably don't agree because he's a police officer, or who knows, he probably do agree because he knows a lot more to it, right? If he can still be his friend, and you won't even give this man your phone number to have a conversation with this man who's supposed to be your, your husband, to get his, you know, thought process on it. Or even try to agree or dis to disagree. Even agree to disagree. You won't even know because you gave him no chance. The thing about it, listen, she gave him no chance to defend himself whatsoever. It's always he said, she said, they said, we said. Never what Chris said. So for her to get up there and keep saying I tried is BS. Because until you have a conversation with Chris that does not involve a camera in your face where you are manipulating him, calling him names, and telling people how much you hate him and don't bring him around you, then you can say you tried. Until then, I have no proof or seen it anywhere. He doesn't even have your number. So when he left, she left her phone, and she was like, wait, where's my phone? And he was like, huh? She was like, <laughs> I was like, bye, Lisa. Bye, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, girl. And I hope you get in real bad traffic on the way home. We don't want to see you no more on the TV. You got to go. Peace. <laughs> I, I was just like, she don't get to get in the apartment. She don't get to get in the apartment. Like, not even a little bit. Not at all. Not at happy. When she got there and knocked on the door, I was like, knock, knock, knock. I said, that's right. You ain't got no key. Get your little knock on, sis. You ain't got no key. <laughs> but I'm just happy Chris told him, chose him. And I just hope they don't find a way to slide Alyssa in there. Because y'all know. Y'all know they about to find a way to slide her up in you. That's it. <laughs> August love story. Um, The one thing I have to say about Alyssa is that she got out of this <laughs> unscathed. Like, we're going to tear her a new one, but she has not been held um, accountable for what she has done and said by anybody. By anybody. I really wish... Uh, <laughs> Dr. Pepper, I think her name is so funny. It's funny to me. But I wish Dr. Pepper would have been there to talk to this girl. Like, unlike everybody else, I hope they do bring her on <laughs> to really get her to be honest with mm. everybody. Because for me, that's the better conversation. <laughs> she no, nah, she's not going to do it because she's embarrassed herself at this point. Nah, she won't do it. But, um, for Chris, I'm happy for Chris. Chris stood up for himself. And he was like, I'm not going to go through this whole process. I don't have to, you know, because she doesn't want to be a, be involved with it and everything like that. And that's the opportunity for Pastor Cal to step in and say, hey, this is we've seen everything. What is going on? Like, what's truly the, the issue? And that's the that's the one thing that bothered me about the whole with all of them and then she she sit up here and lie on him to her mom at this point i felt like her mom knew like she had destroyed whatever relationship she could have with him and they're just going through the motions her mom probably was like i'm not gonna be on this show too much longer anyway i'm gonna just go through the motions i thought he was a really nice guy you know he was a really nice guy everybody else knows he was a really nice guy you know your child is a is a a hole. You know your child has went to where did they go Puerto Rico, and acted a donkey. You you know this about your child because every parent knows their children, and so her thinking that he's a he's, what she say he uh he he talks to her bad he treats her bad or something he's like that disrespectful. he's disrespectful. At what point mm -hmm. have you had a chance for him to be disrespectful? Like you haven't said that every time y'all talk to each other, 
it's I don't like you. How much can a man take for somebody saying they don't like them? You know what I'm saying? Like if you don't if you don't mess with me, I ain't gonna mess with you. That's that's just human nature. I think personally that's yeah, personally that's my opinion. I ain't gonna say I hate you because I think hate is such a strong word, but it's like if you don't mess with me, I'm gonna stay in my lane. Don't come over here fooling with me if you don't mess with me. Be 100 with me because you showed me a little piece of it. I'm going to give you 100% of my thoughts. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's like with that being the case, you sit up here and lie to your mom on national TV and then your whole thing, I don't want to, I want to be, I'm a good person. I worked so hard to do X, Y, and Z. No, you're just trying to get on TV. And it backfired because you acted an ass. And you treated a person, a nice person, or a seemingly nice person, you treated them bad. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes to watch somebody mistreat somebody. You know what I'm saying? And the simple thing is, use the golden rule. Treat people like you want to be treated. That's the easiest thing to do. The most simplest thing to do, and you couldn't do that. And so I'm just like, I hope they do bring her back, but I hope when she comes back, they ask her those questions. Like when she was talking to, uh, I was going to say Rudy, Keisha. but when she was talking to Keisha um, and she just walked out, make her walk out. I would rather her walk out and show that she hasn't grown. She hasn't been, you know, uh, re- she hasn't taken uh, accountability of her what she said in her actions and stuff like that. I'd rather see that than her just getting off scot-free by him saying I want to get a divorce. But kudos <laughs> to Chris. That's all I got to say about that. Your turn. I start off <laughs> by saying I wish Alyssa Speak could have been held to the fire more about her actions. Um, because I felt like Chris gave her such it was his out, but it was such an easy out for her because it was just a simple I don't want to do this anymore, so I'm not going to allow you to do this with me anymore. And so he ended that, and he was completely done with it. I do think that Pastor Cal was pressing for him to say what needed to be said, and he wasn't because he's like, I'm not going to assassinate her character on TV. Um, I just don't really even have the time to do that because I'm done with this. Like, I'm not about to play games with this girl. Now, one of the things that I did realize or I thought about with Chris is that Alyssa has said she doesn't like him. She hates him. He's disrespectful. He's this. He's that. He's all these other things. When you look at it, Alyssa has not been around Chris long enough to know more than his representative. She is literally getting the representation of the things that Chris wants to portray to the world because nothing that we have seen about Chris has given us any inclination other than he allows his time to be wasted. That's literally all I've gotten from Chris. Like, yeah, he hasn't gone off on her, so he has to have some type of decency within himself. But outside of those things, not really much there with Chris. Um, I do think, and I think it was Jackie that said it, but I can't really remember. Um, Alyssa literally started off saying what she needed. Like, she came in like, I'm going to come in and I'm going to tell them how I'm giving it everything that I've got. And then he like gave her like a bomb saying, I'm going to drop this on you and now you can't do anything. And she was more so hurt because she couldn't be the one to say, I don't want you. He had to say, I don't want you, Alyssa. And she's like, I can't believe he did that. Like, he doesn't want me. Now my feelings are hurt and I got to cry because I'm a good person. Who wouldn't want a good person? So it just, I'm happy Chris said what he said. I'm happy Chris got out of it at whatever day mark this was, like 10 day mark or whatever. But, um, okay. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Um, I'm happy that, um, Okay, go back with that. I'm happy that Chris got out of this situation and that everything is done. And contrary to what Tommy says, I hope Alyssa doesn't come back. I don't see a point in her coming back. She's not going to say anything in my mind that would make us 
feel better about anything that she has said so far in these seven weeks of us watching or 10 days of them filming. There's just nothing that we can get out of her that would make me change my mind about her. All right, let me put y'all on me because Lily's yelling about the potty. <laughs> well, I agree with everything that they've said. I want to say copy and paste to what they're what they said. But the one thing I'm gonna add is that I'm actually really proud of Chris. Um when he walked in and he shared with Pastor Cal, listen, she does not want to be married to me. That's how I feel. I feel that Alyssa does not want to be married to me. That was enough for me to know that this is about to go the way that it should. I was really proud of him putting himself as a priority to hell with what Married at First Sight says, to hell about Alyssa's feelings. I don't care. I care about me. I am a priority. And I really wish that more people would put ourselves as a priority and understand our needs, wants, and desires and how people fit in to them. If they do not fit in and they are going to subtract and not add to me, you can go. And I'm really, really happy that he did that. And I liked what he said. I've always said the second thing, second most important thing to me was my marriage. And the first important thing was our happiness individually. Like for me, I was like, you talking my language. That's how I talk. Like, listen, I'm coming in this thing happy and continuously working on me. Um, you know, bits and pieces, things are changing. I'm happy. Please don't subtract from that. Please just continue to add. Yes, we're going to have issues, but not like this. You're not going to embarrass me and make me look foolish. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to do myself a favor. I'm going to trigger the fuck out of you. Excuse my language. Y'all be spelling stuff. I don't be spelling. Um, she is. I'm going to say it for you, Chloe. Bat shit crazy. And um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to embarrass you like you embarrassed me. Because that's all that was, was a huge embarrassment. And all she did was list a bunch of excuses that she's been doing. At least she did say, and her and her mama say it. Well, you know, I was thinking they were going to give you a cowboy at the end of the altar. He was going to be a cowboy waiting on you. Well, you Oh, you thought you had an option? Did you write that down? I want a cowboy. This is not Tennessee. Like, this is not a long season. <laughs> Sorry. Like, I, I don't know. And then the mama. Well, he is. He's still cute. And I thought he was really kind. Because he hasn't, you haven't known anything other than if his friends were saying that he could be X, Y, and Z, you didn't get a chance to see X, Y, or Z. You didn't even have a conversation for five minutes. And even Pastor Cal, who don't never do right, was like, you do know that you came on to marry the first time. You do know that you were going to be in the same bed. You do know that you were going to move in together. Um, and for her to be like, this kind of threw me, you know, I have a thing about being in the bed with other people, ma'am, ma'am. So you was going to get married and do what? If you had liked him and that was a cowboy that checked all your boxes at the end of the altar, what was you going to do? Tell him, oh, you got to sleep on the couch because you got a thing about being in the bed with somebody. You was a liar. You was a liar. You was a liar. And everything you do tells everybody that you aren't a good person, that you are a manipulative person, that you are deceptive, uh, that you are superficial and shallow. You're saying the ex showing and saying the exact opposite. And I'm so glad to see you leave. And I do not want to see her come back. She does not need to come back. There should be no reason that we see Alyssa at all. I don't want her to go and talk next week. I don't want her to go talk to the people and say, so Chris, get we got a divorce. I want Chris to show up and say, I divorced Alyssa. I don't want to see her. I don't want to see her and her little pat in her tears with her in cheek inserts or whatever them is called, you know, when they get their cheeks done. Because you know her cheek the bones don't sit up there like that. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing in her uh giving her them perfect cheekbones like back black people or indigenous people. Them other people do not have cheekbones okay like look how y'all cheekbones are just sitting up like that that's what she want she was going for that okay she don't have, she don't she 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 got that injected i don't want to see her i i i never liked her energy um you know what i'm saying and i just i'm glad to see her go i'm off the box 
because y'all said everything else. Yes, ma'am. Fillers. There we go. <laughs> you, you know, I think I think everybody was right about her. You know, one thing I, I did want to say about Alyssa, don't need to see her. I don't even need to see Chris because Chris has nothing else to tell us. His story doesn't, doesn't have to tell us. They don't have anything else to tell us. They're not ever going to get back together. He made the decision. You know what? And make 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 our reviews a little bit shorter because we down to four couples, right? And so we can focus on the other. We can focus on the other couples, right? So we don't need to see them. My issue with Alyssa is this: How in a day and a half you all of a sudden switch up and you want to stay now? You didn't change your whole rules, your whole game. Everything now is for the cameras because you really want to try. So if when the man said you give him one percent, you want to give him one percent, he changed the rules on you, right? Now he wanted fifty. You only came in with your one. He like nah, you forty nine percent short, right? So, <laughs> so he didn't. He, he wasn't. He really wasn't trying to fill her anyway. You let this man stay in this apartment by himself. You wanted to just hang out with the girls. You thought this was a social experiment, right? Because you wanted to be social with the females in a friend group. You know, look at this man's social media, which I think he was being sarcastic when he said defunding the police. That's why him and his friend laughed at it. I think he was trying to make a joke. And then she started snooping on his stuff. Um, you know, but again, he might be woke like that. He might very well be woke like that, that he understands the, the, the what's going on. Um, but at the same time, Alyssa had to realize you only can beat somebody up for so much and down for so much before they can say, you know what, enough, enough. Especially when a person who doesn't really eat anything. Let's be honest. He didn't know he didn't need anything from her. Right? He has a good career. He got a good he got everything. He doesn't need anything from her. And so she was like, she coming to the table with no chips. And he and had nothing to win and everything to lose. And she lost out on a good husband that somebody else is gonna pick up. And I don't think she ever gets married. So I just I mean you think somebody might be out there for, her, but she really ruined herself and she has a legacy. She does have a legacy. As being one of the worst people ever on Married at First Sight, that will be her leg. Her name will always go down in history, unless there's somebody worse than her as being one of the worst females on Married at First Sight. That's a legacy. Hey, before we get out of here, we've been here for a while. Closing thoughts, everyone. Closing thoughts. Let's start with August's love story. Closing thoughts. Um, I look forward to next week, man. Uh, <laughs> that's really it. <laughs> um, like I said, man, I. I just hope somebody holds a listen to the fire. Chris is all right on Chris. Um, Elijah one needs to stop having his misogyny showing. Um, Michael is, I don't know, stop lying. Jasmina, <laughs> like, let it go. L I G it. Um, Steve and Noy, like, next week, that's next week is their time to shine. So, looking forward to that. And, uh, yeah, uh, follow us. On August Love Story, yeah. everywhere, yeah. and okay. yeah, and everybody else as well. Like, like this video if you're watching it, or you know, like the video, share it, and everything like that. Um, you got anything? I don't have anything really. Tell everybody bye. bye. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
and a hard copy. You get a hard copy, I'll give you a free bath salt that I make myself that I be praying over and stuff. Y'all don't even know how much stuff I be doing over here. But um, I'll let y'all know next week. It'll be up. Well, it's on my website now, um, which is talisaray.com. Um, but all the details aren't necessarily there, but it's ready. It's ready for purchase. Okay. Uh, subscribe to everybody. Like it. Hit the notification bell too, though. Don't just subscribe and then walk away. Subscribe, notification bell, watch the videos. Even if you have to pause and come back, pause and come back, pause and come back, do that, okay? And then tell everybody. And I mean, for all of us, you don't have to do it all at one time, but maybe this week you watch me, next week you watch, watch August Love Story, next week you watch Chloe Johnson, you hear on Jack and Glenn, so y'all should be watching them all the time, you know, but just add us to the rotation. That's all. Chloe. Um, final words is I'm tired of these people already. <laughs> it, this is like what 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 season what episode is this? Seven? Seven, okay. yes. Yeah, this is about the time I start getting tired. The time I start getting tired with these people. Um, I'm glad Alyssa's gone. She gotta go. I'm glad she's out. We won't have to see her no more. Um I really hope that like we get a, a turnaround with some of the couples. I I, but just, I just I want to see somebody win, and right now I don't see nobody winning. <laughs> like nobody. I hope we get at least some type of turnaround, especially with like I feel like it's over. Um, Jasmine and Michael. I don't they I don't think they can come back. They can come back. I don't think they want to. It's definitely not her. Um, Elijah Wana Katina gives me a little bit of hope if she speaks up and just not conforms to whatever he wants. Noi and um, Steve, I think they can work. Um, she just has to let go of the three kids and he needs to find a way to be stable for her. Other than that, I could see them meshing really well for a long period of time. Um, and that's all the couples, right? Who are we missing? Mark and Lindsay. Yeah. Mark and Lindsay crazy. They gonna be all right because they crazy for each other. It's like Jamie and Beth. Remember how we just knew they was going to get divorced? They was flipping over tables and jumping over stuff and telling each other the sex is bad and everything. And the next thing you know, they were still together to this day. Still together. They be all right. They crazy for each other. They That's the crazy couple you just going to have to just accept that they toxic. Okay? Um, other than that, y'all, I just hope that the season comes back around so we can have some enjoyable moments and not everything be so intense. Um, other than that, don't forget, follow me on Chloe Johnson on YouTube. Okay, you can go over to Instagram, all that good stuff. Um, make sure you follow everyone here. Y'all already say all of that. Like this video, y'all. Like this video and join us next week. That's it. <laughs> Appreciate each and every one of y'all for joining us each and every week here at um, Jack and Glenn. Thank Chloe uh, Johnson. Thank August Lord's Love Story. Thank Talisa Ray. Thank each one of you guys for joining us. Each one of these couples got their own unique things got going on. And I think we see ourselves in each one of these couples or seen ourselves or had this experience in, in, our, in these couples. So I think what's great here, I think Stephen and Noy can make it, but they got to be willing to have the tough conversations. I don't think they have the tough conversations as of yet. Um, Michael and Jasmina, they just have a lot to work on themselves. They both have inner issues that they need to work on before they can be together. Um, I think a lot of these people lie at these interviews. I just like to be the interview at Married at First Sight and see what they go through. Because these, I think some of these people have been lying. I'm still on this why they didn't catch uh, Alyssa, right? I'm sorry. They could have caught that through the door. I'm sorry. <laughs> Something needed to change. Um, and Mark and Lindsay, Mark just needed to have a voice and, and tell Lindsay, it's okay, but I don't need you to be mom right now. I need you to be my wife. And there's a different hat that I need you to wear at different times. So once again, thank y'all. All you guys in the chat, appreciate you. Thanks for talking in the chat box. Thank you for jumping in the chat box, uh, having conversations. I'm in conversation with Deep. I'm going to go back and look at it a little bit later. Appreciate you all. Have a good night, and we'll see you next week. Bye.